Welcome, Pewter Report readers, viewers, and listeners to a brand new edition of the Pewter Game Day Show. Energized by Celsius, the official energy drink of PewterReport.com. That's right, it's game day, baby. Get hyped, stay hyped. This is a huge matchup for your Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they have first place on the line when they face their divisional rival, the Atlanta Falcons. We're going to break it all down and then get into the game itself once kickoff gets going at 1 o'clock. I'm your host, Matt Matera. Joined with me is my fellow colleague from PewterReport.com, Adam Sly Slavon. Adam, thank you for joining me this afternoon. How you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm not quite on Josh Capo's level, but it's game day. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, like I said, we're going to break down everything from this game, some of the best matchups, what to look for on offense and defense for the Buccaneers. But, of course, we got to remind you that Celsius is the official sponsor of the Peter Game Day Show. We all need the same. That's all right. Check out Celsius and their newest flavors. The Oasis Vibe is one of their new ones. The, uh, oh, what's the other one? The, whatchamacallit, the Cosmic Vibe as well. One of their newest flavors. Absolutely a huge fan of it. It's a sparkling fruit punch. We'll do more of the Celsius stuff uh, in a little bit because we also got to remind everybody that the Peter Game Day Show is also Brought to you by mybookie.ag. Use that promo code Pewter, that's P-E-W-T-E-R. Get a first deposit bonus. It can be all the way up to $200 and as little as $45. The spread on today's game, four bucks versus Falcons. The Bucks are a two-and-a-half point favorite against Atlanta. Remember, last week they were a huge underdog against the Lions. This week yep. they are a big-time favorite of two-and-a-half. The over-under is 38 as well. At some point during the show, I'm going to punch in that bet because oh. I have not done so just yet. But yeah, mybookie.ag, use the promo code Pewter, P-E-W-T-E-R. Football season is the best season to bet. Um, but you don't have to limit to yourself just to football. You can do it for hockey's back in full swing, baseball. You got the uh, Championship League Series going on. The World Series is right around the corner. The NBA is starting up soon. I know Adam's a big fan of the other Bucks, uh, the yeah. Milwaukee Bucks, <laughs> and getting Dame Lillard. So, uh, yeah, great time to start betting. Maybe if you're kind of new into it, you can, uh, you know, just dip your toe in the water just a little bit over at mybookie.ag. Use that promo code Pewter, P W T E R. Again, it's free money. So even if you learn from Plant City Math, you know that that is a heck of a deal. MyBookie.ag, promo code Pewter, P-E-W-T-E-R. By the way, I want to give a shout out to all the people in the chats. We already got a super chat off the bat from our main man, Paul, a.k.a. Florida Dreamhouse. Thanks for the $2 super chat who says, I've played the Matty Diamonds Bucks picks. Go Box. Yeah, I got a show every Friday that comes out. It's called Pewter Picks and Props, it's presented by Underdog Fantasy. And um, make my Bucks picks. By the way, I'm nine and one with my Bucks picks. So I am just handing wrong. out. I'm handing out free money. That's what yeah. I'm doing to all of you people. Nine and one. I pick the spread and I pick the over under every single week. I've only lost one time. Nine and one. My um, player props. I'm like thirteen and four, something like that. And I'm winning in my NFL picks as well. I'm handing out free money. Watch the show. Like and subscribe. It's all on YouTube. Make sure you check it out. Thank you very much to uh, Paul, a.k.a. Florida Dreamhouse, for the $2 Super Chat. Rashad West says, how you doing? I like <laughs> it. Uh, let's see what else. All right, yeah, people are hyped up for the game. That's That's what we love to see. Um, let's get into the injury report. I think I got to pull up that graphic. Oh, the inactives for today's game. 
For the Bucks, it's uh, outside linebacker Marquise Watts, tight end David Wells, defensive lineman Pat O'Connor, offensive lineman Brandon Walton, and cornerback Derek Pitts Jr. So, Adam, I mean, we've been talking about it all week. This is the cleanest bill of health that the Bucks have had really since the beginning of the season, is it not? Yeah, it really is. And the only big difference between last week against the Lions and this week is Anthony Nelson is back. So another outside linebacker to put in the rotation, meaning that Marquise Watts, he gets listed as an active now. And I guess the other notable uh, name on the list would be David Wells. So going to see a lot more Payne Durham again this week. He had his first catch last week. Maybe bigger things are in store for the Bucks tight ends heading into this game against the Falcons. Yeah, and they need all the production they can get from the tight ends because, to be quite honest, it's been few and far between from that position, which is also crazy because Kate Otten is third on the team in receiving yards. So what does that say yeah. about, you know, the other wide receivers outside of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin? But, you know, we highlighted a lot of it during the week. Obviously, tight ends, a dual threat position. You got to block. You got to be a receiver as well. And they haven't held their own on the blocking side of things. And that's really no. scary in terms of, you know, K-Dot can do a little bit of both. But Co-Keefed is there strictly and primarily block. to block. That's all he does is block. And if he's not doing that well, that presents a big problem. And I think it's kind of funny right now because I have the, uh, the Fox game day show going on as well. And you see Rob Gronkowski and it's <laughs> – they are sorely missing a guy like Gronk. Obviously, Gronk's arguably the yeah. great tight end. By the way, happy National Tight Ends Day to everybody. I think they're uh, they're trying to make that a thing. But, you know, Gronk's one of the greatest tight ends of all time. So, uh, And even uh, Scott Reynolds mentioned Cam Brate. No Cam Brate either. Just like yeah. no production out of the tight ends this year. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Uh, Narav says, Vita a go. Woo! Yeah, I mean, Vita Vea playing in this game I think is super super important because we only got a taste last week of Vita Vey and Kalijah Kansi of what they can really do and even that was off to a good start because Kalijah Kansi got a sack so I think it's really important that Vita Vey got going in today's game yeah and especially going up against uh, Bijan Robinson who we can talk about a little more in detail later but it's going to be huge having Vita Vea and Kalijah Kansi going up against that interior of the Falcons offensive line. Uh, Eater 17 says Durham officially surpassed Wells. Yeah. You know, what's funny um, on Friday, I think it was Greg Allman of Fox sports, which again, shout out to Fox mentioning them a lot early on. Um, Greg asked a question to Todd Bowles on Friday and it was about, Payne Durham and kind of the, what Eater is saying here, the switch of Durham over Wells. And when Todd Balls got asked about Payne Durham, his face like absolutely lit up. He was so excited to start talking about Payne Durham, how great he was in practice. Obviously, he made one catch in the game. That was about it. Um, but Todd Bowles seems to be very high on Payne Durham. I'm curious to see what he can do moving forward. I mean, I'm not going to look at his first game and be like oh like he's the savior at tight end or he's not going to do anything but um i i think it will be important moving forward adam because i think there's a possibility eventually down the road that Payne durham surpasses maybe not kate on but at least co Keith for tight end too and gets used even more yeah definitely especially as a red zone threat which is primarily what he did at purdue and just one more point about like the bucks tight ends if there's a silver lining here, Kate Otten had one of his best games last season against the Falcons. He had, uh, he actually had a career high six receptions. So maybe this is a game the Bucks tight ends get on track. And as well as that, the run game will need to get going as well. Yeah, no question about it. Let's uh, move this along. Let's look at when the Bucks are on offense. What do we expect? From Tampa Bay's offense today, of course, is brought to you by Eric Gross Group and the Eric Gross Realty Group. Uh, make sure you give them a call. Eric's a huge Bucks fan. He's super helpful with your home buying needs. It's one of the biggest decisions you'll make in your life, and you want to make sure you have the right team with you. So check out the Eric Gross Group. Adam, this will be quite interesting with the Bucks offense because, I mean, we can't sugarcoat it. They stunk last week against yeah. the Lions. They scored six points. 
there were opportunities, and I think that's probably the most important thing than anything else. There were opportunities for the offense. They just did not execute on those big plays. So when you look at this matchup facing the Atlanta Falcons, what are you particularly keeping your eye on? How would you want the Bucs to attack the Falcons today? Yeah, so there were two big points that I had in looking at the Bucs offense today. The first of which, mention it a prior, establishing the run game is going to be critical, especially going up against a Falcons secondary that has Jesse Bates, A.J. Terrell, uh, along with Jeff Okuda and D. Alford also playing solid ball. So the Bucs aren't going to be able to just throw at at will against the Falcons yeah. there's some solid players in the secondary that can stop them with Jesse Bates arguably one of the top defenders in all of football so being able to establish a run game and really have a breakout game is going to be critical and this week Luke Gedeke Robert Hainsey they believe a big game is coming that Rashad White is due and it'll be key to get some chunk runs some big plays out of this run game and really inject some life into it more so than just the two, three yard gains, being able to extend and break one off against the Falcons. And then um, just a second point, I think a third weapon also needs to step up in this offense. Yeah, you mentioned it. It's the Mike Evans and Chris Godwin show, but who else? And this week, Dave Canales, he spoke about Trey Palmer. Maybe he has a big play, big play Trey for Kate Otten to get some receptions. And for a guy like Devin Tompkins or Raheem Jarrett, uh canales mentioned as well as being able to get him going just somebody being able to step up yeah i think those are all great points um i'll go with the last thing you said and then kind of bring it back around to the uh, uh the running game at some point yeah i mean they you can rely on mike and chris for until the wheels fall off but at some point you are going to need someone to step let's face it last game as well i don't want to harp too much on it but you know, last game was a, just a bad game for Mike. He had a couple of drops. He didn't have too much of an impact as a wide receiver. He had that costly penalty. That is the type of game, especially with a big-time opponent, that either you need your best players to show up, which, I mean, Chris Godwin didn't really either. Most of his damage was done once the game was out of reach. That's the type of game where you need that unsung hero. You need someone else to step up in a big way. And the Bucs just flat out didn't have it from Devin Tompkins, who they tried to get the ball from Trey Palmer. I actually don't really blame Trey Palmer. We want to do Baker Mayfield yeah. overthrew him twice. Uh, and, and that was the big storyline against the saints. Cause Mike went out. Devin Tompkins had a touchdown. Trey Palmer had a touchdown. Even Kate Odden had a touchdown. So while they were able to step up against new Orleans, nobody was anywhere to be found when it came to trying to defeat the Lions. So, you know, Dave Canales, as much as we love him, you could talk about progress. You could talk about the communication and everybody's getting in the, getting on the same page. and Everyone's going the right way. But at some point, the pendulum is going to swing. And if the, if the offense struggles again, <laughs> and Dave Canales, I don't want to say happy-go-lucky because – I think like his positivity is actually very important, both yeah. for football and kind of just life. Like his attitude on life, I think more people should model after. Um, but you can only be so upbeat and positive with a bad offense for so long. And I'm not even saying that the Bucks' offense is bad. I'm just saying that they they struggled last week and while I think they're still going in the right direction, today's game is gonna be super, super um, I mean, it's important, obviously, but just it, it's going to explain a lot of this team today. And that brings me to my next point with the run game, which you brought up in, in, in such a great way. I mean, we, we don't <laughs> we don't know just yet what this Bucks offense is as as a running team. Yeah, I and every single week, Adam, you know, we go on this show. The fans are awesome. We we talk about every single thing about this team. I just don't think personally that through five games we can make a total and utter mea culpa about what this Bucks run team is. All right. If you want to get mad about them against the Vikings and how they ran it, sure. If you want to get mad about how they ran it against the Eagles, I get it. 
But they also looked really damn good against the Bears, and they looked mm-hmm. really not as damn good, but really good against the Saints as well. So what? It's like everyone forgot about those two games, and they just they just write it off as oh they're bad teams, so whatever. Well, what about the flip side? The Eagles and the Lions have the two best run yeah. defenses in the league. The Eagles went to the Super Bowl last year. The Lions have one loss and have shattered teams left. They look and well right. on their way to go on yeah, the Super Bowl so this like, year. What are we talking about with oh, the run game is so horrible? They took advantage of the teams that are bad on defense, and you know, the Saints are more aging than bad. They didn't take advantage of teams with a really good run defense, and the teams with the really good run defense are going to shut the Bucs down. But in a game like today against Atlanta, they can run the ball against Atlanta. It's the same thing with this team as a whole. They're going to lose to the bad teams, or sorry, they're going to beat the bad teams, such as the Bears, and you know, we'll see when they play the Titans in a couple of weeks and things like that. And they're going to lose to the Eagles, the Bills, the 49ers that are coming up. So this run game is a microcosm of what the Bucs are as a team. I agree. And I think by midseason, there will be a different tune sung with the offense. And Dave Canales really opening up the playbook and the players getting comfortable. And I think a lot of frustration will be gone once there is that big run. And there's that promise for more. Because the results have been there, as you mentioned, games against the Bears and Saints. Yeah. But there was just like a consistent two yard run against the Lions and Eagles through no fault of really Rashad White or the offensive line. You're going up against the best of the best already. Uh, the Eagles have they, they they pretty much have two defensive lines with how much depth that they have. Yeah. <laughs> and so so for the Bucks, just being able to get more comfortable, a bigger day is coming. That's really yes. the belief that the players have had this week is that there's going to be a breakthrough uh bat w says the run game is horrible eater 17 says filer and hainsey must be replaced next year if we want a deep playoff run i do think the offensive line has to get younger now you're very young at the tackles with tristan Wirfs and luke getticke but uh you know we've talked about how robert hainsey probably needs to be replaced at center and obviously filer's not getting any younger so I do think we'll see a little bit of turnover again next season with the guard position. I know Bucks fans aren't going to want to hear that. Maybe Cody Malk moves to center, but, you know, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, One thing I do want to bring up, though, uh, we talked about this for a little bit, as Demon Murphy says, Tucker time, give him the Vaughn carries. Do you think that Sean Tucker should get back into the mix, or should they spread out the rushing attempts more because – Rashad White only had one more rushing attempt than Keyshawn Vaughn, and I don't know if that's the right recipe for this team. No, it isn't, and it shouldn't be uh, Rashad White, Keyshawn Vaughn, 60-40 split. Uh, as you enter midseason, uh, I feel like the Bucks have been easing Rashad White into getting a lot of carries because yeah. last year he was more of a change of pace back, but it should really be Rashad White getting 80 uh, and maybe Tucker and Vaughn getting 10. But with Vaughn, you already know what you have in a running back. He was a former third-round pick, hasn't really emerged in guys like Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, and now Rashad White have all unseated him on the depth chart. And so giving a guy like Sean Tucker maybe a few carries he showed in the preseason, he could have a big run. I think he had a a 26-yard run. There was another one that was called back because of a holding call. There's more promise with Sean Tucker than Keyshawn Vaughn at this point. But also getting Rashad White more involved and more comfortable. Um, it's kind of like a, in baseball when you have a relief pitcher and you convert him into a starter. I feel like that's yeah. what the Bucks are doing ah. with Rashad White. So, no, I like that analogy. That is a uh, that is a very good one. Speaking of good ones, of course, we want to give another shout out to Eric Gross Group and uh, or Eric Gross and the Eric Gross Group of Realty. Go to www.housesinflorida.com to check out what they can offer to everybody, which is absolutely a ton. You know, Eric and his wife, they are family people. They they have a child. A lot of people that are buying houses obviously have children and want to, uh, you know, start their child's lives with, you know, the right home and everything like that. So give Eric a call. They're family people. He loves to talk about the Bucs. He's been on the show multiple times. He's in the comments as well during it. So if you want to talk Bucs football, he knows everything 
about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He used to play football as well. The home buying experience can be stressful at times. It obviously takes up a lot. And so you want to make sure you have the right people. And Eric Gross is the right person to go to. If you're moving to Florida, they can help you buy a house. If you are unfortunately leaving the great state of Florida, he can help you sell your house as well. So again, go to www.housesinflorida.com or houses in FLA. Dot com. Check out the Eric Gross Group. See how they can help you. They are the official realtor of PewterReport.com and the Pewter Report podcast. Talked a lot about the offense, some good conversation. Let's move over to the defense and uh, what is going to happen when the Bucks are on the defensive side of the ball. Adam, why don't you lead us off? What are you looking for when, uh, you know, the likes of Vita Vea, Devin White, Anton Winfield Jr., Carlton Davis, when they are uh, on the field, what do you want to see from them? Yeah, so I think first off, waste no time getting after Desmond Ritter at quarterback. I think it's going to be critical for the defense as a whole today to be able to stop him. And with as good as the offensive line has been in Atlanta in terms of run blocking, They've also given up 19 sacks this year. And so for guys like uh, you mentioned, Vita Vea, Kalijah Kansi, JTS, Barrett, maybe even a guy like Yaya Diaby getting his first sack, being able to get into the sack column with regularity, I think is going to be a key to this game. And w- along with that, also getting a big game out of all the linebackers, not just the edge rushers, but also at inside linebacker. The Falcons have, Two really good tight ends and Kyle Pitts yeah. and Janu Smith. And last week, Levante David, he shut down Sam Laporta. So if he can shut down Kyle Pitts and maybe Devin White can hold Smith, I think that'll also be critical because the Falcons offense is really Drake London, the two tight ends, and then B. John Robinson in the passing game. So if you can limit two out of three of those, you'll be in really good shape. Yeah, sorry, I was taking a sip of water. Yeah, I think you explained that uh, very, very well. <clears throat> My concern with the Bucks defense, and their defense has been so good, so it really feels like I'm nitpicking when it comes down to, to it. I mean, they don't allow too many touchdowns. The touchdowns they do allow, again, it feels like kind of freak plays. You know, they didn't yeah. allow one touchdown, no touchdowns at all when they played the Saints two weeks ago and in today's day and age in the NFL, if you're allowing field goals, odds are you're going to win the game. And then even last week against the lions, I mean, yeah, the touchdown for Amon Ross St. Brown. I know people will get mad at the box. They weren't able to tackle him. That was just a freakish great play by him. I mean, he ran all over the place and got the end zone. The other one was, you know, a bomb to Jared Goff where, yeah, Ryan Neal was a second too late. Williams was able to get his hand around and and make the catch. Those have been few and far between the season, and neither of them really took place in the red zone. They were, like, right on the outskirts yeah. of the red zone. So I really don't have too many concerns about the the, the Bucs defense because I I don't think the, the Falcons are going to have the big play, the 70-yard right. touchdown, something like that. I know B. John Robinson is very capable of it, I just don't really see that happening. And if the Falcons do get into the red zone, I'm still taking the Bucks defense. We've shown how stingy and how great they are in the red zone. What concerns me a little bit is, and we'll see if this is the breakout game, I understand that the Falcons are quite susceptible to allowing the sack. Desmond Ritter holds on to the football a ton, which plays he into does. the Bucks' favor. I worry that the the defensive front, if we're just talking about defensive tackles and outside linebacker, I worry that they won't be able to get home on Desmond Ritter and the Falcons' offensive line um, as quickly as possible. So, therefore, Todd Bowles dials up a number of blitzes, which he will anyway. Yeah. And my concern is if the Falcons know those blitzes are coming, that's when... We've seen in the past the Bucks make pedestrian quarterbacks look pretty good because it's like, oh, you're blitzing. I see it. I recognize it. 
let me dump this off to the running back or whoever. And I am a little worried we may see that again today because as great as Todd Bowles' defense is, if the blitz doesn't get home and that's kind of their identity, it's a little bit easy to take advantage of a team that can blitz and not get to the quarterback. And we might see that today with Desmond Ritter. Yeah, I think you make some great points. And just to kind of circle back, you mentioned uh, during the Lions game, the two big plays that the Lions had on offense. If those plays don't happen and they're rather field goals, you're looking at a 12-6 to game rather yeah. than a 20-6 to game. And that that's a big difference. And you also mentioned uh, the backup quarterbacks having success against uh, Todd Bowles in the past. When you, when you mentioned that, I think of Mitch Trubisky last year against the yeah. Steelers when he came in relief of Kenny Pickett mm -hmm. and was really solid on like third and twelves, being able to convert them constantly. And then also uh, PJ Walker when for, of the Panthers last year yeah. and the big game that they were able to have. And so when you talk about the Bucks defensive line uh, really needing to have a big game, I think it really starts with Kalijah Kansi and the matchup that he has. We'll get into some matchups later, but against Matt Bergeron who's probably the weakest link along the offensive line. And just being able to have that quick burst and get off really quickly so Desmond Ritter isn't holding on to the ball, it's going to be really critical, I, I believe. It is so fascinating to see how well Kalijah Kansi is playing. I mean, let's yeah. look at it all. One, defensive tackle is arguably outside of quarterback. We know quarterbacks it's the most important position. It's the toughest position to play. But defensive tackle is one of the most difficult positions for players in college going to the NFL. It's one of the toughest positions to, you know, automatically jump in and, and start, start producing like you did in college. Secondly, Kalijah Kansi, a first round pick that gets hurt. He injures his calf before the Bucks are even in full pads. He had yeah. like a, Four days of practice, whatever it was, then gets injured, misses the entire training camp and the entire preseason, missed all those reps, missed all those snaps. Yes, he's getting mental reps. That can help to a degree. Mm -hmm. Comes back, plays his first NFL game with, again, no practice, no reps, anything. Comes in, goes against the Minnesota Vikings, plays 11 snaps, gets a QB hit. It was nice. Gets mm -hmm. injured again. We don't see him for weeks until he comes back against the Detroit Lions. And what did he do in that game? As Todd Bowl said, he was disruptive. He had a sack on Jared Goff. He played the whole game, like multiple, multiple snaps. There was no training wheels for Kalijah Kansi yeah. in essentially his first NFL game. What he doing, what he is doing right now is tremendous. It's fantastic. <laughs> And I almost don't understand it because it defies logic of everything that we've seen in the NFL. I am so excited for Kalijah Kansi. I can't wait to see more of him because, I mean, if he if he continues to play like he's already been playing in this small sample size, him and Vita Vea will be some bad mamma jammas because <laughs> it will be so tough to block this team. I think you said it best. And with Kalijah Kansi, I think the Bucks were expecting like his performance last week, maybe in his second, third season, not in his first game. Like yeah. the fact that he hit the ground running and uh, as you mentioned, being disruptive, that's what the Bucks wanted when they selected him with the 19th pick. So if this is already going to be like something that happens every Sunday, it it'll be scary in a couple of years when you pair him with Vita Vea and just speaking on the difficulty it is uh, for a defensive tackle to transition into the NFL, you kind of have seen that with Logan Hall or um, other Bucks defensive tackles in the past, whether that's Warren Sapp or Gerald McCoy. Oftentimes they have to put on yeah. weight, play in a whole different scheme, and learn a really intricate playbook. So again, for Kalijah Kansi to be doing all of this already, it bodes really well, and the excitement should be pretty high. Yeah, absolutely. I want to get some comments from uh, from the Peter people that are watching. We greatly appreciate all of you guys that are uh, watching today's show. Um, 
Clock Five White says facts on Cancy for me too. Excited to see him in second game. Mark Fisher says amazing how Cancy compares after one game to Hall and JTS after two seasons. <laughs> Mark, that's a great point. I yeah. mean, <laughs> people are <laughs> there are various opinions on Joe Tryon Shank. Is he good? Is he a bust? Yada yada yada. All this different stuff. Logan Hall, I think we can all agree, definitely came out the gates uh, a little slow for sure. But Kalijah Kansi, it's, uh, you know, everyone's all excited to watch him, including myself. And Adam, you're right about some of the other famous defensive tackles. Gerald McCoy, I think, got off to a slow start. Vita Vea had to have a conversation with Jason Light. Jason Light essentially gave him a pep talk, being like, get it together. And eventually he did. And now Vita Vey is one of the best nose tackles in the league. I, I know we're really praising him, but I mean, how could you not love what you're seeing from Kalijah Kansi? And Narav brings up another great point. Let's not forget the Lions have one of the best offenses yeah. in the league. And Kalijah Kansi was doing all of that. So shout out to Kalijah Kansi for what he's been uh, able to do so far this season because it's um it's really been something it really has been uh, a true joy to watch football fan asked what happened to logan hall he's still in the rotation yeah and he's doing a lot of the dirty work adam he's um you know eating some of those double teams he's creating the pathways for vita to get to the quarterback and helping the outside linebacker so logan hall i don't think by any means is going to be a premier defensive lineman in the league but if he is, you know, a step or two above a prime Will Golston, I think that's still a pretty good draft pick. Yeah, he doesn't have to light up the stat sheet, but if he can just open it up for guys like Hansi and Vea, be solid in run defense, maybe chip in like a handful of sacks a season, you'll take that. And he's not going to be a name that everyone's gonna gonna know when they think of the Bucks defensive line. Yeah, but he can just be a steady Eddie and. Really, if he's just a rotational guy for the next decade, like Will Golston has, you'll take that as a draft pick at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, not every single draft pick is going to be Tristan Wirfs and Antoine Winfield Jr. We just have to be, we just have to be realistic about that. To be quite yeah. honest with uh, with everybody, but let's keep this train rolling with uh, the matchups, the key matchups to watch when it is the Bucks offense against the Falcons. Defense. We'll start off with quarterback Baker Mayfield against free sa safety Jesse Bates. Now, these guys have history, not bad yeah. blood by any means. Shout out to Taylor Swift. Uh, but obviously, Baker played for the Cleveland Browns while Jesse Bates was in the same division with the Cincinnati Bengals. So they are familiar with each other. Adam, who are you taking in Baker Mayfield versus Jesse Bates? Yeah, so this is a really interesting matchup for me. And this week, I think Baker Mayfield, he's going to bounce back to some extent after the Lions game and look a lot more like he did in the first four games when he's he was completing, I think, 69% of his passes or something like that. Yeah. So he's going to come up more confident. I believe he's going to play pissed off. But going up against Jesse Bates in the secondary, kind of mentioned it before with just how much depth the Falcons have there uh, compared to any other position on defense going to give the edge to Bates, but it's not to say Mayfield won't throw for 300 yards or have a couple touchdowns, but with Bates and the other guys, there is an opportunity for Atlanta to maybe create some turnovers there. Yeah, so I'm with you in terms of I think Baker is going to play really well today um, yeah. because, remember, when he struggled against the Eagles, the next week he threw for three touchdowns. I don't think Baker is going to let too many bad performances really uh, manifest itself where he's doing it every single week. And, like, he knows where he can improve, too, like what throws that he missed. So, with all that said, Jesse Bates is the only player on the Falcons that has an interception this season. I believe yeah. he has three. He's a very talented dude. I'm going to take Jesse Bates in this one, but I was toying with the idea of giving it a push. But I'll take Bates. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have a super chat, and you know our rule. If you super chat us, we make sure we get to it ASAP, and you get to cut the line. So shout out to Trustin Vorbeck. Thank you for this $5 super chat. Trustin says, Matty Diamonds. 
I have an anytime touchdown parlay. What do you think? Godwin, Saquon, Diggs, Jameer Gibbs, Aaron Jones, Tyreek, and McCaffrey. I mean, that is a lot of money if that ends up hitting. Yeah. Jameer Gibbs, I would definitely worry about because even when he was healthy, he wasn't really in the, the rotation too much. And Christian McCaffrey might not play today or I think, I think he's tomorrow. questionable. Yeah, he might not play. They're, they're the Monday night game, so he might not play tomorrow. But obviously, if he plays, he scored a touchdown every single game. So it's kind of a lock with Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I like it. I mean, the, the Packers offense obviously struggles, but someone has to score. I picked yeah. Chris Godwin as well to score a touchdown um, because I think he's very due. Uh, he's also saying twenty dollars for four thousand three hundred. Trust him. I think overall, pretty good picks. I hope you win. I want you to come on the show and say, "Maddie Diamonds, I won forty three hundred. So good luck to you, Trustin, on yeah. your uh, on your bet this week. Hopefully, hopefully you hit. And CW says, "Let's go, Bucks." All right, let's get to this next matchup. Matt Filer against Grady Jarrett. Grady Jarrett had a very controversial play last season when Atlanta was in Tampa Bay. If you guys don't remember, the Bucks got out to a big lead. They were steamrolling the Falcons. Falcons came back. Bucks still had the lead. They were trying to ice the game out. And Tom Brady got sacked. He might have fumbled too, but he definitely got sacked. Would yeah. have finished the drive. And he was sacked by Grady Jarrett. And it was... Calls a roughing the passer, and it was a very controversial call, to say the least. It gave the Bucks a first down and essentially ended the game. Because of that, I'm going to take Grady Jarrett because I think he might have a little bit of a uh, revenge game in mind. Yeah, so I also went with Jarrett um, just for being a longtime menace. Uh, I think he's made two Pro Bowls, 34 sacks from... A nose tackle isn't easy. He's re- been really good for a long time. And Jared, along with Calais Campbell, who's still there, still a presence along the defensive line, there's a lot of experience between the two. And while Matt Filer, he's been a starter in the past, and he's been okay this year, I think you have to give the edge to Jared in this matchup. And, hey, he might have a couple sacks if that revenge game really does come yeah. through. <laughs> Uh, Joel Rican says, I remember the call was bad. Not going to lie. And Angle says, Jarrett got a raw deal with that penalty and not counting on the Brady no calls today at all. Yeah, I feel like the Bucks haven't really gotten too many calls this season. Or like yeah. Mike Evans was able to draw a pass interference and then, uh, then they called him for offensive pass interference not long after. Next matchup, Kadon against Richie Grant. Adam, which uh, which way are you going with this? So, uh, I actually picked a push for this one. Ah, uh, you stole my uh, <laughs> stole my pick. Yeah. So for Otten, I mentioned it earlier. He had a big game against the Falcons last year with six receptions. So maybe he has luck against Atlanta and uh, is one of the many Bucks to have done so in previous years. But going up against Richie Grant, to me, it's just a lot of a lot of meh because Richie Grant, yes. he's not a playmaker. He has two interceptions in 39 games, and Kate Otten hasn't done much in the receiving game this year. So it's like, eh, who will have the slightly better game? Uh, I think it's just going to be a push at the end of the day. To be honest, I don't even know why this matchup is on the list. Like, do we have to <laughs> fill a quota to get at least five? Why is this matchup on the list? No one cares yeah. about it. <laughs> Kate Otten hasn't done much for the Bucs. Now, is this the week that he does break out? I hope so. Yeah. But I, I think he hit the nail on the head when he said this is a meh matchup so i'm gonna go with the push because i don't particularly care for it uh next up mike evans against aj terrell this is a this is a star-studded matchup that people want to see Um, i'm gonna go with a push on this one just out of respect for two great players at their position especially because mike's been struggling the last couple of games i mean he got injured in the saints game he was off to a good start he had 40 yards in the first half, so if you double that up, that would have been 80 for the game. Uh, but last last week was bad, and obviously A.J. Terrell is, is a very talented wide uh, cornerback. I fully expect Mike Evans to bounce back, whether it's this game or next game or whenever. I still have all the confidence in the world in Mike Evans. 
I also like AJ Terrell, though, so I'm going to go with a push in this game. I debated doing a push, but I'm going to give the slight edge to Mike Evans here, just All based right. on his track record, especially against the Falcons. Bailey Adams, he hit the nail on the head, and he really looked at the statistics. So in 16 games against the Falcons, Evans has 85 receptions for over 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. That yardage total is 12.2% of what he's done in his entire career, coming against one team. So although A.J. Terrell, he's a really good corner, Mike Evans could also have a rebound game. And yeah. he had a big performance earlier this year against uh, the Bears. So you never know. Um, but I'm going to go Evans here. I respect it. Uh, Angle said Evans needs a rebound week big time. Cole Pfeiffer says go box big game with big consequences good or bad win or lose yeah absolutely i mean first place is on the line and i guess the good news is and as shaggy says mike looking for a rebound absolutely and mike's a huge basketball fan too um but i i think and it's kind of a you don't want to have this mentality but if the bucks lose they still have way more to go where they can, you know, pick up the pace or, or, or catch the ground that they lost with this game. But if they win, that puts them two games ahead of everybody else with the tiebreakers already of beating the Saints on the road. So you'll have another home game against the Saints and beating the Falcons. Put it this way. If the Bucs win, it means a lot more for the division and the standings if the Bucs win than if the Falcons win. And I'm yeah. just looking at this from... The NFC South lens, not just a Buccaneers lens. And it's uh, also, I think, uh, I was going to say, PFF, if the Bucs win, they have a 73% chance of making the playoffs. If the Bucs lose, that goes down to 40%. So just speaking on how much this yeah. game needs from a Bucs perspective, that's a big swing. Good point. Good point. All right, let's get to this last offensive matchup. It's running back for Shad White against linebacker Caden Ellis. Adam. Who you got? So, again, I'm, I'm going to stick with the, uh, the Bucks here. I'm going to go Rashad White holding an advantage over Caden Ellis. Now, Ellis, a longtime Saint, uh, signed with another NFC South rival in the Falcons. He profiles more as a pass rusher. He had seven sacks last year. And for Rashad White, that breakout game may come. And if it doesn't come now, you kind of wonder when. So. Yeah. Rashad White, he might be playing with a chip on his shoulder, and I think in this matchup, at least, he holds a slight edge. Yeah, I, I don't want to keep doing push, so I'm <laughs> going to pick Caden Ellis in this one. Um, Rashad needs to get it together. His vision has been off. He's got to stop shuffling his feet in the backfield. Hit the hole. Just yeah. go to the hole. Speed, speed, speed. That's what's most important uh, where I think Rashad White needs to pick it up. I don't think he's going to pick it up. I think the run game is going to be so-so again today. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Um, so I'm going to take Caden Ellis in this game. By the way, these matchups are brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code Pewter. That's P-E-W-T-E-R. Get a first deposit bonus. Get in on the Pick'em games, which I'm a big fan of, where I do Pewter picks and props every single week. They also got a lot of great in-game tournaments. Um, you could do the rivals as well. So if you think Rashad White's going to get more rushing yards than Bijan Robinson, you can pick that in uh, this underdog fantasy matchup. The pickums are awesome. You just um, got to pick at least two players, one from each team. But you can win up to twenty times your money. You just choose a number of stats as you see on the screen, whether it's you know higher or lower on a certain number of receiving yards for a player, or passing touchdowns, or whatever it is. Use that promo code Pewter, P-E-W-T-E-R. Get a first deposit bonus with Underdog Fantasy. All right, we are 10 minutes until kickoff, Adam, so uh, let's pick it up a little bit. It's yeah. probably more my fault than anything else, but uh, <laughs> with the key matchups for the Bucks defense against the Falcons offense, we're going to start off with Kalijah Cansey versus Matt Bergeron. Adam, who do you have in this matchup? Okay, so we, we've talked at length about we how excited we are about Kalaja Kansi. So you can't just pick Matt Bergeron. You have to go with Kansi here. Um, the battle of the two rookies. Kansi had a really impressive game last week, and I think that continues this week going up against Bergeron, who really is the weakest link. The Falcons' offensive line has four solid starters, but this is a matchup to exploit. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kalash Kansi has been fantastic. We talked about how the Falcons are uh, vulnerable to allowing a number of sacks. Give me Kalash Kansi in this matchup. Next up, another awesome matchup. Devin White against Bijan Robinson. I'm going to go with the push in this one because Bijan Robinson has been more of a factor in the passing game than he has been in the running game, at least over the last two or three weeks. I think in these type of moments, you need your best players to step up. I'm confident that Devin White will be able to step up. That's why I took the over of six and a half tackles for him, which you can play on Underdog Fantasy. Um, out of respect for both players, I'm going to go with a push because we know where Devin can struggle and sometimes he'll over pursue. Um, but I'm still confident in what he can do. So push. So I think uh, for, for this one, I have to go with Bijan Robinson here. If you were going to make remake the NFL street games back yeah. in the days of PS2 <laughs> and pick a yeah. cover athlete, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody better than Bijan Robinson. Just his ability in the run game, the pass game. Already he looks like he came out of Andy's toy chest as the newest oh. addition for the Falcons offense. So I'm sorry, Devin. It's going to take a group effort here. But Bijan Robinson, he's a real deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with what you said. And again, we call it like we see it. We're not just going to say, oh, the Bucks are amazing at every single thing that they do. <laughs> it's just not the case. Uh, next up, Carlton Davis against Drake London. I'm going to take Carlton Davis in this one. Uh, he gets up for the big matchups. Drake London is coming off a hundred receiving yard game. This might be a little bit more about Desmond Ritter than anything else. We yeah. give me Carlton Davis. He loves to go one-on-one -on -one with the team's top wide receiver and lock them up. If Carlton's healthy, he's one of the best corners in the league. So I'm taking Carlton Davis. You make a valid case, but in this one, I went with a push um, just because London, if there is a receiver to step up for the Falcons, it has been him this year. He had a solid end to his rookie season the last five weeks um, last year. And then in this year, he had his first 100-yard game of the season last week. So he's shown the ability to really step it up, and I think he will. But you mentioned Carlton Davis, and then Jamel Dean, Antoine Winfield, and that secondary, they're going to be locked in on honing in on stopping just London because there really isn't another wide receiver to make big plays for him. Yeah, exactly. And that's why uh, they're so reliant on the tight ends, which – we talked about earlier so I, if anything they'll have the the biggest <laughs> the biggest impact which we'll get to that uh that matchup in just a second next up outside linebacker joe tryon shoyanka against left tackle jake matthews adams adam who is your pick i went with jts here just very slightly over jake matthews jts overall has had a better season than last year already has three sacks has been more consistent in pressure. He isn't all the way there yet into finding his ceiling. But going up against Jake Matthews, who's been a longtime starter, I think JTS could have a sack. That's not out of the realm of possibility. And then also being one of the many edge rushers to create pressure. I'm going to go with Jake Matthews. Uh, Joe Tronchenka has been on the come up. I, I thought he played yeah. quite well. Todd Last week, Todd Bull said it was his most complete game. But I've been staunch, I think that's a word, uh, yeah, on my word. on my stance that until JTS truly has a breakout game or a big time moment, he has to prove it to me. So mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm gonna stay with that statement, I have to choose Jake Matthews in this one. I'm optimistic that JTS is trending in the right direction. But he's got to prove it. And again, like yeah. last game, he did the same thing where he was great in the run game. He ended up getting a sack. And then he just had a free run going right at Jared Goff and just ran right past him. So <laughs> it's kind of a little bit of the, the same that we've seen with Joe Tryon-Shank. It's one step forward, it's two step backwards. And I hope he takes multiple steps forward today. But until then, I'm taking Jake Matthews. All right, our last matchup. Another fun one, Levante David against the Falcons' tight ends of Kyle Pitts and Smith. Adam, who is your choice? So out of all the matchups listed, this is, I think, the biggest one. And yeah, I went with Levante David here. Just based on the game he had last week, if he carries that into this week, I mean, there's no question you have to go with Levante David, right? And as you mentioned with JTS, until you see otherwise, until I see Levante David really have a bad game, 
you can't really go against them. And Kyle Pitts, Johnu Smith, they're both good tight ends. But Levante David, he's been a great player for a long time. And Pitts' usage within the offense is so iffy. Um, I just have to go with David. Everything you said is why I'm picking Levante David as yeah. well. Just He was fantastic last week yeah. against the Lions. And it's a shame that it's getting overlooked because the Bucks obviously didn't play well on both sides of the football, particularly on offense. But what he did against Sam Laporta, who very much is, you know, looking like one of the best tight ends in the league. Not the best, but, you know, top yeah. five, I think you can make an argument for it. Levante looks like, again, the linebacker that he was in his prime. I mean, what he's doing is out of this world. And I hope it is. the more that the Bucks continue to win and be successful, that he'll start getting more of that national recognition for doing it at this age, which yeah. is young in life, but old in football. Levante David looks like he hasn't lost a step. He looks even better than he was last season, and especially yeah. two seasons ago. And that is a beautiful thing for Bucks fans. So um going to take Levante David in this matchup because everyone loves Levante David. They get energized when they see Levante very much like if you get energized from having a Celsius energy drink, the official sponsor of the Peter Report podcast. You heard me talk about the Cosmic Vibe before. They have so many awesome flavors. The Arctic Vibe is my personal favorite. So if you need to know where to find a Celsius energy drink, go to the store locator on the Celsius website, punch in your address, and I'll tell you the closest geographical location where you can find one at your local Walmart, Target, health and fitness store, or your bodega. Bodega. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and then, if you want to start getting them in bulk, which I would recommend because there's so many awesome flavors, get that variety pack. It's a variety of spice of life. You go to Amazon, click on the subscribe and save. You can have it sent to your uh, residence whenever you want, every week, month, quarterly, yearly. Just make sure you're drinking Celsius energy drinks. Make Celsius your number one pick. Celsius Energy Drinks, the official sponsor of the Pewter Game Day Show. Um, all right, we're two minutes until kickoff. You guys don't have to change that dial at all. Adam and I will be on giving our live reactions to everything that we are seeing in the Bucks game. Hopefully it's good news, but again, we call it like we see it. By the way, these were our predictions for the game. Scott Reynolds is undefeated. Yeah, picking- he is. Uh, picking Bucks games. I don't know if that's a typo with Bailey. <laughs> Apparently, Bailey did not pick two games. That might just be a typo. But Buck, uh, yeah, he's Scott's, four and one too. He's four and one. Scott is undefeated. Um, you and I are four and one. As is Josh Capo. I think you took your first loss last week, Adam. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, appreciate the confidence though in the team. We all have the Bucks winning. So yeah. uh, hopefully, we're all correct <laughs> with our predictions. Yeah. And you look to be the biggest optimist in this game, having them reach a 30-point total. Yeah, I think this is going to be a bit of a breakout game for the Bucs. I mean, they all talked about being pissed off, and, uh, you know, Dave Canales went on a soliloquy about how the offense, (laughs) how happy he was that they were all communicating and, you know, all the fun stuff, as Demon Murphy says, Bucs versus the world. And Eater says, pound the rock. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, if if the Bucks defense is what we think they are, shout out Dennis Green, RIP. They are who we thought they were. <laughs> but, you know, for everything we say about the Bucks defense, if they play a typical Bucks type of game on defense, the Falcons aren't going to score much. And I think this is a great opportunity for the Bucks to really get it together, whether it's a big game from Mike Evans, whether it's a big game from... Baker, whoever it is, I think they're going to clobber the Falcons. I think they're absolutely going to clobber the Falcons. And I think what's most important more than anything else is that they get off to a fast start because they have not by any means gotten off to a fast start early on in this season. I agree. And I think uh, from the predictions here, it's telling that none of us picked the Falcons to score more than 16 points. So for the Bucs, <laughs> all they really have to do is hit 20. If they can do that, I mean, they're, they're going to win. I don't think Desmond Ritter really changes the outcome of games uh, and can really win games as opposed to just being a game manager. I think he's just a a game managing quarterback. So, yeah, they're going to want him to throw the ball a lot. And, um, 
yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. Obviously, Bucks fans are hoping for a big win. That's going to do it for our game day show. But again, don't turn that dial. We'll be right here for the Peter Game Day show as we uh, transition to the game getting started. So I'm going to play that video one more time. <laughs> If you're just tuning in, welcome, Peter Report readers, viewers, and listeners, to a brand new edition of the Pewter Game Day Show, energized by Celsius, presented by Celsius, the official energy drink of PewterReport.com and the Pewter Game Day Show. I'm your host, Matt Matera. Joined with me is my colleague, Adam Slavon. Adam, I'd ask how you're doing, but we've just been talking for the last hour, so yeah. I know you're doing pretty well. We are about to get into... The big time matchup this week of Bucks versus Falcons with first place on the line in the NFC South. Before the game gets going, Adam, we have to sync up our TV. So we you do. tell me, buddy, what are you seeing on the TV at the moment? Right now, I just want to say I see a lovely Culver's commercial. <laughs> I'm, I'm just ecstatic <laughs> about that. Uh, now I see the Fox Sports. Uh, okay, I'm gonna get going, but I'm a little bit ahead of you. So they just showed like the an aerial look with like planes and stuff, and then they're gonna cut it to the sideline reporter Christina Pink. Okay, um, I see the aerial view. Okay, they're gonna show Christina Pink in a moment. Tell me when you see her, and especially specifically when they put up like her name at the bottom of the graphic. Okay. In the meantime, hello to all the Peter people that right. are watching. See your name. Okay, cool. All right. We are close to being synced up. It's never always 100%, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Eater17 says, cheese curds for the win. Thank you. By the way, uh, everybody, feel free to um, give your game prediction. As Demon Murphy says, it could be about a player. It could be about the game. If you think the Bucs are going to win, what the score is going to be. As Demon Murphy says, Rashad White, 105 yards, one touchdown. Trey Palmer, 125 yards, two touchdowns. That is pretty wild. That's pretty bold. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bucs will get the ball first, as Jonathan Stutzman says. Let's go. And uh, Joe Regan says, let's go, Bucks," And it will be a touchback. So the Bucs will start at the 25. Big opportunity for Tampa Bay's offense, who, again, struggled – Last week, only scoring six points at DP Buck 32 says Tampa 28, Falcons 17. By the way, I have Bucks minus two and a half in this game. I also took the over of 38, which is you such a low over. number, but it's quite risky because the Bucks and Falcons have gone under in every single game except for one for each team this season. So doing a little bit of something has got to give, as Narav says, 23 to nine. Bucks start out with play action. Complete a pass to Chris Godwin doesn't go for much, though. The Falcons had it well covered. It's going to be about a one-yard gain for Chris Godwin. I do appreciate the Bucs going play action on their first play. Yeah, and not just a run play. Try to open it up through the pass game. Yeah. At some point here, we're going to have to get your uh, underdog picks. Yes, I will. Commercial break. I'll uh, add the graphics into StreamYard, and I'll let everyone know. All right. So I have NFL picks as well. Bucks and shotgun thrown on second down. It's completed to Mike Evans. And that Mike is Evans. a first down getting Mike Evans involved early. And I think they've gone away from not Mike Evans, obviously, but just the short intermediate passes that I think worked early on in the season. I don't think we saw that too much against Detroit. Just slants over the middle. Yeah. Things I mean, like you like the result of that play, like airing it out. 10, 15 yards. Yeah. Like, and getting that first it twice, not even yeah. running it. Um, Long Lost Glacier says, designing opening plays for Godwin and Evans. You go, Canals. <laughs> Wayne says the Bucks are going to win 35 to 9. Oh, look at that. A run that goes nowhere. <laughs> run play, yeah. <laughs> Negative yards. Yeah. Not the start you want to see. Not at all. Rashad White. 
maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. And yeah, more issues with the run game. See uh, Trey Palmer and Devin Tompkins in the game. There you go. All right, second and eleven for Tampa Bay. Couldn't even get back to and the line. And Rakim. Yeah. All the- Very yeah. wide receiver heavy. Baker and shotgun looking to his left. His pass is tipped. Oh, it's tipped. Unfortunately, this has been a trend for Baker Mayfield. The ball does get tipped when Baker is playing. Let's see, tipped it here. In training camp, and it happened um, obviously last week, pretty much, and that led to the interception. So we'll have third and eleven coming up next. Bucks got one first down on this opening drive. See if they can make a big play on third down. Got five seconds left on the play clock. Falcon send a blitz right up the middle. It's wow. A- Screen to Rashad White, who breaks a multiple tackle. Wow, gets the first. Got the first. Fantastic play. <laughs> what a fantastic play by Rashad White. I mean, that play was kind of dead to rights, to be quite Yeah, honest. it was. It was dead to right. I like the idea of the screen, especially with the Falcons sending the blitz. It was not blocked too, uh, too properly, to be no. honest with you. I thought it was going to be a sack, but yeah. the offensive lineman, especially Robert Hainsey, got downfield with some key blocks there. And then Rashad White missing tackles. I mean, you like to see it. Yeah, and remember, he had the big play. Baker threw an interception a couple plays later, but he had the big, uh, you know, breaking tackles and stuff against the Saints that got a third down. Right in the red zone. Um, so he's making people miss, at least in the passing game. Running game still, yep. still looks to be an issue. Another run there only gets uh, two yards, second and eight. Eater17 says, space is White's best friend. As Tom says, wow. Wow. (laughs) All right, second and eight bucks are essentially at midfield. They go play action. Baker rolling out. It looks like he's going to scramble. And he just throws it away. Throws it away. I feel like Baker got... Yeah, I was going to say, that looked like a late hit. Like, Baker got rid of it, and then he got tackled. Baker's obviously giving it to the ref. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you think that was, uh, was a late hit? How about you, Adam? I think so. You've, you've kind of seen that more this year, surprisingly. Like, defenders pushing the quarterback, like, when he's going out of bounds. Oh, well, they didn't call that, but it is a penalty on the Falcons. So it will be a first down for your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Ravens just scored a touchdown. That, that'll be an exciting game, too. The Ravens-Lions this week? Yeah, I took Lions uh, plus three in that game. Oh, okay. Going five wide here. Baker and shotgun. Dev Thompson's in motion. motion. They give him the ball on a swing pass, and he is great in space. So, yeah. hey, listen, if the run game's going to struggle, make this your run game. Short passes up the field, swing passes, getting your guys out in motion. I like it. A little yeah. wrinkle for for the uh, the Bucks offense. Which, by the way, five like. Five yards on those? I mean, yeah. you'll take that I mean, all day. even four. It's there. Four yards, four yards, four yards. That's the first down. Yeah. <laughs> Every single time. Even if you it, learn from Plant City Math, you know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good callback. Uh, yeah, and now Rashad White's in motion. Baker going deep down the field looking for Chris Godwin. Makes the catch. I don't think he was in bounce. Catch, but so. Not a bounce. Yeah. Nice effort, though. Good effort. But again, this, you know, we kind of saw this with Baker last week. He... Miss some throws, and that's a missed throw right there. I mean, Chris Godwin was wide open. Like, how can you get mad at Dave Canales when that's Chris Godwin see, is, is wide ass open? He is. All right, he maybe not. Too. Yeah, you have the safety in the back. I didn't. I didn't notice him at first, but still, he beat the guys off the line. By the way, got a good comment from Adam. Uh, we'll get to it after this play. It is third and six for Tampa Bay. 
Falcons send a blitz on the left side. Baker scrambling, throws it sidearm. It's knocked away uh, by A.J. Terrell, who we talked about a lot this week. And uh, Bucks are in a tough spot. Probably going to punt because Todd Bowles is very conservative. Um, but, yeah, that's going to stall the Bucks drive. Baker almost escaped from yeah. the uh, impending defender. But Adam P. Oh, fourth and six. Baker's still on the field. So Ooh. I love this. I love this. Why not? Show some guts. By the way, Adam P. Park says, uh, ever since watching Josh Capo's video breakdown of the running game woes, I can't see Otten effing up the block. I think you mean unsee. Uh, shaking my head. Yeah, shout out to Josh Capo. He's put out some great video film recently. Uh, fourth and six. Falcons in the blitz again. Baker has nowhere to go. Someone's helmet comes off. Baker's scrambling. He's scrambling. He up fakes, throws it again. It's incomplete. So the Bucks oh. do not convert on fourth down. To be honest, I'm still fine with the move. Yeah. Why not? First drive of the game. Oh, you're got. past midfield. You're not in position to kick a field goal. Why not go for it? But <laughs> Okay. That was a uh, Cody Mal. I thought it was a Bucks helmet at first. They are a little similar with the Peter. <laughs> ripped black. that helmet off. Cody Mal completely. Ripped off Grady Jarrett's helmet. Um, it's quite interesting because we've we've praised the Bucks pass blocking a lot the past couple of seasons and or past couple of games. Didn't look too great on this first drive. I mean, the, no, the third and fourth down plays, Baker didn't really have any time in the pocket or anything. And I just want to say, uh, mention it pregame, the matchup of Baker Mayfield, Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates was right in that backfield yeah. right away <laughs> yeah. on Baker Mayfield. Um, get to some comments here. King Duffy says, bad call. Eater17 says, this drive is on Baker. Yeah, I agree, Eater, because, I mean, he had Chris Godwin open, and he missed him. Al Bundy says, I would have tried a field goal. This is why they brought in Chase McLaughlin, is it not? Ooh, Josh Allen just threw a terrible interception. I think that field goal would have been from like 62, though. Yeah, at like yeah, what, the 45? I, I, yeah, I think it was a little bit too much um, outside. Unless you have Justin me. Tucker, you're probably not making that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shaggy says, Bowles showing some backbone. Yeah, and maybe that's with him being a defensive coach, just trusting the defense, you know? Yeah. Like, our defense have good field position now because the Vox didn't get it, but I think that's fine. Trust the defense. Or if you have the over of 38, you don't hate it either. Uh, <laughs> Angle says, I mean, the field goal try would have been closed. Yeah. Uh, Randy oh, wants to know. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, note here, Chris Godwin joins Mike Evans as the only players in franchise history to amass 6,000 career receiving yards. Very cool. Yeah. Congrats to uh, Chris Godwin. Praise be. <laughs> Praise be to God. Got to hear it at wants, least once, you know. Yeah. Uh, Randy wants to know what the F was that sequence. I think it was just poor pass blocking. Like, we don't really know what the sequence was because Baker had to run for his life as soon as it got out there. Yeah, showing a close-up of Dave Canal, so that's cool. You know who's at the game today, of all people? Mr. Ooh. Beast. Yeah, I saw that before. So, fun that's little story. Uh, I got to give a shout-out to... Uh, a, a friend of mine, her name is Lo. She, she does uh, hair and makeup. And she was talking about doing a, oh, as the Falcons immediately move they the ball play. down the field, they're at the 40. Anyway, uh, she said that she had this uh, opportunity. She's thinking about doing um, hair and makeup for some type of video. And she's like, yeah, the client's name is like Mr. Beast. She's like, I don't know how much to charge him. I was like, Mr. Beast has like 100 million followers on YouTube. Yeah. You can charge him whatever. He will be able to afford it. So uh, anyway, shout out to Lo. <laughs> but yeah, he's at the game. So cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, Falcons are moving quite quickly. Desmond Ritter has not won on the road this season. But he doesn't lose at home. It's such a weird dynamic. Yeah. Except for uh, last week, I think they were home. I think he's 31-1 and one now. Another College quick pass. NFL. This to Johnu Smith. That is good for a first down. So the tight end game, we talked about that. Moving quickly. 
Waiting for that Bijan Robinson run, though. That is true. Patterson in the backfield. Yeah, Daniel Flick, who was on our show on Thursday, and Patterson gets the handoff and moves up the field somewhat easily, was saying that uh, Patterson, wow, the Giants wide receiver almost made a fantastic catch. I got red zone on my other TV, so <laughs> it jumps <laughs> around to everything. Um, yeah, Daniel Flick was saying, he was on our, our show on Thursday, that Cordell Patterson – is coming back from an injury and they kind of eased him into the offense last week, but you should probably see more of him today. And he's definitely a thorn in the side of the Bucks. Bucks send the blitz. Ritter has time, throws over the middle. It's caught by Johnny. That's a nice catch, though. Yeah, that'll put Atlanta inside the 10 yard line. Be first and goal for Atlanta. Bucks getting picked apart a little bit. That's the Giants' yeah. the field goal. They stink. Actually, I kind of want the Giants to win because they play the Jets next week. Looked like Devin White kind of looked over his shoulder and was like, Carlton Davis, you got that? And yeah, apparently not on that one, but. First and goal from about the seven yard line. Falcons in shotgun. Bijan, nope, that's Tyler Algier, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Gets tackled for a short gate. And, you know, this is a big thing that we talk about. This is the red zone, you know? Bucks are great defensively in the red zone. If you hold Atlanta to a field goal here, honestly, not that big of a deal. Yeah. They allow Reset a touchdown. The field position. Yeah. They allow a touchdown, a little bit different. Yeah. Kind of want to see a sack here. Bucks fans would sign up for that. Falcons again in shotgun. Quick pass. Somehow that is caught. I don't know how. Don't know how either, I caught that. I don't know how John U. Smith caught that, or how Levante David didn't come up with the interception either. He couldn't have played better coverage John, <laughs> on there. <laughs> that honestly, and I hate the Patriots, so I hate bringing it up, but uh, that just immediately reminded me of the interception by Russell Wilson in the Super Bowl. Yeah, Mal Malcolm Butler. Yeah, Malcolm Butler. That plays like in Madden when the players go through. Each yeah, other. I know it. <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? All right, Ritter's going to keep it. He's got the room. JTS cannot get him, and that is a touchdown yeah. for the Atlanta Falcons. They go up 6 nothing early on in this first quarter. Desmond Ritter, not totally known for his legs, but he reaches he the end them. zone. Atlanta will go up 6-0. Not the guy you expected to see running in the end zone. Yeah. to everyone's comments in just a moment. The extra point by Young Wei Ku is good. That makes it 7 nothing. Falcons over the Bucks. After yeah, JTS, got to make that play there. Yeah. Stop him at the 1 or 2. King Duffy says Devin White is not 100%. Narav says, yikes. King Duffy, he should have made that tackle. Stan Glassman says, Joe Tryon blew it. Took too long to read the run. I think a couple defenders were kind of mistook by Algier because it looked like he had a lane up the middle. And yeah. Then took it along <laughs> yeah. The side. yeah. Uh, only Bucks fan says, defense looks tired already. I, no, nah, I, I think the Falcons just moved it well against them. They did. <laughs> Paul, a.k.a. Florida Dreamhouse, says Jesus H. Tap Dancing Christ. Yi Jinping. Devin White is so slow. Miguel Ramirez. Offense won't do jack squat because it's led by a short bum quarterback. Miguel is in his feelings. Uh, Eater 17. We've lost our mojo already. Shout out to Austin Powers. Hmm. By the way, stay tuned for my Halloween costume this year. It's a Ooh. little teaser. Oh, boy. I'm excited for that. Uh, Ed Gain just gave them half the field going on fourth and six is desperation. Uh, to be honest, I like the move. I'm sure the analytics say that they should go for it. Um, I don't know. Show some guts. Yeah, they if didn't he didn't it. go for it, I feel like people would be like, why didn't exactly. you go for it? You know, it's like 50-50. 
Al Bundy saying that the Patriots are up 10 nothing on Buffalo. Honestly, Buffalo has struggled a lot. You know, they did not look against the Giants. Good, good against the Giants, I should say. They essentially came out unscathed. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Josh Allen, 0 for 1 with uh, interception. Yeah. So, yeah. Jets ruined him. Uh, oh, yeah, I got to put in my graphics for my picks on Underdog Fantasy. By the way, use that promo code Peter, P-E-W-T-E-R. Where you at? Where you at? I know everybody's watching that Raiders Bears game. You know Brian Hoyer, <laughs> got Tyson Badgett. Yeah. Probably not going to see that one on Red Zone too much today. No, it's on right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, probably won't see too much of it. All right, so the Bucks have some tough sledding to do. Down seven nothing. Where are you at? I have like a thousand different graphics, so I'm like, I just looked through all of them. All right, Devin Tompkins takes this one out. Uh, cuts it to the left side, gets up to the it's 30, best. to the 35. Nicely done by Devin yeah. Tompkins. Get that man in space. That was such a weird camera angle. I'm it was an odd, yeah. I'm not a fan of that camera angle. No. Look at that. The Bears scored a touchdown. Congrats to them. Wow. Might be the only one of the game. Okay. Keyshawn Vaughn is in the game. <laughs> oh, boy. Took two drives to get Keyshawn Vaughn in. And the throw goes to Keyshawn Vaughn. And misses. He him. does not see it. There's a flag. Let's see. Holding on the defense. So again, Bucks get a uh, another call their way. It's on AJ Terrell. Yeah. See what happened here against Mike Evans again. They're getting yeah. at it already. <laughs> <laughs> it's a second holding call on him. Yeah, I think that's a fair one. Yeah. Six thirty-seven to go in the first quarter. By the way, Falcons lead seven nothing. Pain Durham in motion. Bucks go play action. They block it fairly well. Baker throws. Yeah. It's a bit. That was high. a nice block by Durham, though. Like yes. he took that block and stride. Got, yeah, got pushed back a little bit. There is a flag on the play. Chris Godwin was looking for one. Another like one. Another one. And uh, it's one of those asking you shall receive. Baker's pointing forward. See the call. Give us something. Oh, are they going to do the classic? We talked about it and there's no penalty. Yeah. I always wonder, what are they talking about in there? Yeah, right. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Yep. But you said no, no foul. foul on the play. Yeah. And to be honest, just another bad throw by Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Again, you have Chris Godwin open. You just overthrew him. Four of nine passing. Starting yeah, not here. good. Not good. Baker and shotgun gets the snap, throws over the middle, caught by Kate Otten. Hey, wow. look at that. The tight end's getting involved. And I have him on my fantasy team. And there you uh, go. That's, that's like first... two points in a PPR league. Yeah, yeah. First down, Tampa Bay. I also have uh, Mike Evans on my team. And I'm playing Jordan Love this week. Oh, boy. My two quarterbacks were uh, 
Aaron Rodgers and Daniel Jones. <laughs> oh. And then I picked up uh I picked up Love after Rodgers obviously went out. <clears throat> Oh, a good run by Keyshawn wow. Vaughn. About Unexpected. eight yards. That's the fastest I've seen him look in a long time. He like shot like out of a cannon there. Nice and blocks. The key is he again what we've been talking about. He just kept it moving. Yeah, didn't Plus stop, didn't hesitate. Up. Looks like it's gonna be yep, false start on Tampa Bay. So one step forward, another step back. On that run, though, like you saw him take that quick cut, like inside, and that's where he got the yards. Baker throws over the middle, caught again <clears throat> by Kate Otten. It's about a yard short of the first down. Makes up for the false start. It's already two catches for Kate Otten. Yeah. More than he's done in a while. Oh, they're going to QB sneak it with Baker. He got it. At first, it, at first, he got hit like right at the line of scrimmage, but, uh, the chippiness of Baker, he moves forward. Yeah. All right, everyone's healthy. Everyone's good. <laughs> Hopefully. It seems. <clears throat> they saw the Eagles do it so many times. They're like, we got to do it too. And they got the first down. Well, this is a little different because he took the handoff and then, or the snap, and then went to the right. Ah. <clears throat> All right, Bucks are at the 40. They are moving on this drive. You're going to run it with Keyshawn Vaughn. This is going nowhere. Yep, but backward. Just a little bit. I'll make it second down. And 11, 12? If it's designed to go to the outside, though, I mean, they're... Like there was a little hole in like in between yeah. Otten, like if he cut it back, but that's one of those we won't really know until the uh <clears throat> until the all twenty two. Yeah. All right, second and ten for Tampa Bay, three thirty one to go in the first quarter. Baker and shotgun gets the snap. He's looking, he's throwing deep down the field. He's got Mike Evans open. open. Touchdown, he caught it. Tampa Bay. Touchdown. Mike Evans with the touchdown in the corner of the end zone. He beat his man deep. Baker hit him right on the button, and the Bucks yep. are back in this game. It is 7-6 with an opportunity to tie it up after the extra point. Good for Mike Evans. Good for Baker Mayfield. The Bucks are back. The Bucks are back, baby. Their first touchdown in five quarters. Cooked yeah, Mike there. versus A.J. Terrell, just a straight sprint down the field, and Mike won. Right in the numbers. And that's good for my fantasy team. Yeah. That's that's 10 points right there, baby. Yeah, not good for my underdog fantasy, but that's fine. I'd rather be wrong and Bucks fans be happy because we don't do this without the Peter people. As uh, DP Bucks says, finally, Yi Jingping says, going to miss your prop bet on Evans, Matty Diamond. That's fine. I can live with that. Tempting but not cool. <laughs> Wayne says, Evans caught one. Oh, let me update that score ticker. You know, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I went with the Kate Otten higher on the receptions. Did you? It's, it's paying off. Very nice. Very nice. That was a great uh, drive to respond by the Bucks. Uh. Absolutely. All right, we are tied at seven. That was awesome. Very nice play. Okay, so these were my underdog fantasy picks. I had higher than six and a half tackles and assists for Devin White. I don't think he made a tackle on that first drive, but no. he won drive. <clears throat> Lower on 54 and a half rushing yards for Bijan Robinson. 
I believe he got. I don't even think he got a rushing attempt on that first drive. He didn't. No. Young Way Koo higher than one and a half field goals made. Baker Mayfield higher than two hundred twenty nine and a half passing yards, and Mike Evans lower than fifty seven and a half receiving yards. Again, I'll gladly be wrong about Mike Evans or some of these. If if it's better for the Bucks, then I'm happy to oblige. Yeah. Uh, for my underdog fantasy picks. B. John Robinson, I took the gimme at half a, half a total yard, the higher. Uh, Kate Otten, <laughs> higher than two and a half receptions. He's at two. Uh, Kyle Pitts, I yeah. uh, went higher than 29 and a half receiving yards. And for Rashad White, I thought it was going to be a bounce back game, higher than 45 and a half rushing yards. But it looks like Vaughn, he might, again, split carries with him. Yeah, seems like it. Yeah, I stayed away from Rashad White this week. Uh, I, I picked him a fair amount, and I don't want to like get too repetitive. And um, yeah, you know, I want this to be to be a little bit of a wait and see approach for the Bucks run game. Are they the team that ran well against the Saints, or are they the team that couldn't do a damn thing last week against the Lions? Yeah. <clears throat> right now, we have fairly mixed results. But anyway, how are we feeling, Bucks fans? Bucks tied it up seven seven. Paul, a.k.a. Florida Dreamhouse, says, play pissed off. Yeah, I, I hope they are. Paul, a.k.a. Florida Dreamhouse, also says, too much talent on offense to only get 18 per game. Marcus Banks says, I like Auden, but he cannot block. Adam P. Park says, Auden got blown up on the bad Vaughn run. Thanks, Josh. It's all I see now. Damn. Yeah, again. Huge shout out to Josh Capo for the film uh, film room stuff that he's done. Uh, we have a couple videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, one was from the Saints game talking about the success of the Bucks offense with Dave Canales and his scheme. Um, he also had two great videos talking about the run game woes of the Bucks offense and the third down woes of Tampa Bay's defense, why they weren't able to get off the field too much. As the Falcons start this next drive with a short run by Tyler Algier. I love seeing Algier in the game. That means B. John Robinson isn't uh, isn't going to get those rushing yards. Yeah. Yeah, very true. I think this season Robinson has 80 carries and Algier 75 heading into this game. So yeah. kind of interesting that it's a, like a 50-50 split because Robinson, first round pick. Falcons go play action on second down. They throw it across the middle. How the hell did Kyle Pitts catch that? Yo, what? That might be catch of the day right there. Yeah, I mean it's only for like a five yard gain, so Bucks fans don't need to freak out. But holy crap! And my uh, Devin White gets the tackle, so helps with my higher than six and a half tackles for Devin White. Whoo! Like one handed casually behind the back. Like come on now, that was terrific. (laughs) And he held on to it, too. Like, Chris, Christian yeah. Izian was right there, and Devin White as well. Wow. All right, third and four. Can the Bucks get off the field? They do. Levante David Ooh. came very close to intercepting the football. But as we've seen, Desmond Ritter has been wildly inaccurate. I mean, Kyle Pitts only made that one-handed catch because it was so behind him. Great pressure from Kalijah Kansi. I didn't see who blitzed on the play. Uh, but they definitely forced Ritter to get rid of the ball quickly. And Bucks are going to get the ball back. Again, ooh, actually, I did not put this up yet. I'll do it after the punt in case anything draft, drastic ha- happens. I mean, Ritter looked good on that first drive going four for four, but that drive, again, like you mentioned, the inconsistency yeah. with the accuracy there. I would argue, though, that, you know, like two of his passes were swing passes to the running backs. We got a false star penalty on Atlanta. All right, so that'll give me a quick moment. By the way, I took the Bucks minus two and a half. I have the over of 38, which 14 points in the first quarter is a fantastic start. Still a long way to go. And I took Chris Godwin anytime touchdown. I think Chris Godwin is due as former Buccaneer, a Super Bowl champion, Bradley Pinion, punts it away. Devin Tompkins, he had the great kick return before. Not as much success yeah. this time around, but still fairly okay field position. They're not pinned deep by any means. 
And that will make it 7-7 as they go to commercial break. As Yi Jinping points out, can't see with the pressure. Adam P. Park says, Matty Diamonds, I love the Pewter Picks and Props video too, sir. Adam, thank you so, so much. I really enjoy doing those shows. It's no secret I'm a big fan of uh, gambling and betting responsibly. That's the key, responsibly, of course. But, you know, I love talking about the Bucks game, especially from a gambling aspect. Um, I love betting on the other NFL games too. So I do it because I love fun. the nickname, Maddie Diamonds. Like, yeah, shout out to um, Paul, aka Florida Dreamhouse. I believe he's the one that came up with it. Uh, yeah, started calling me Maddie Diamonds, and that's uh, yeah, that's what we're going with. Because like some people call me Maddie Ice, I'm like, do I want to be associated with the quarterback that choked away a 28 to three lead? Not no. exactly, and no disrespect to to Matt Ryan. I actually think Matt Ryan does a pretty good job as the uh, CBS broadcaster. I don't think listening. I've heard him yet. I was watching. He did the Jets Broncos game when the Bucks had the bye, so obviously I was watching that game. And it was him and Tiki Barber and oh, uh, cool. whoever the play-by-play guy was. And yeah, I thought they did a good job. <laughs> you got uh, Mark Schlereth and Chris Myers on the call for the Bucks game. Chris Myers does all the preseason games with Rondé, so he's very familiar with the Bucks. And uh, both of them were at Bucks practice on Friday. So that was cool to see the, the broadcasters there. Has Chris Myers done it in years past too for the Bucs or? Yes. Yeah, the okay. preseason games. Yeah. And I know teams... he also does a lot of uh, NASCAR races too. Yeah. So for whatever reason, like in the preseason, certain guys do like every preseason game. Like I think like Ross Tucker, he's on the Dan Patrick show all the time. Um, he always does like the Eagles preseason games as a play by play guy or maybe another team and a couple of people are like specifically with this one team, but it's only for the preseason. Chris Uh, Myers will do like any random NFL game during the regular season. So I don't know why it's like so specified for the preseason, but I don't know. Just, just curious. Uh, Shaggy said, Matt Ryan, pretty good in the booth. Yeah. I thought he did a good job. All right. Bucks got their third drive. All the, this has been a long ass first quarter. It has. Bucks have it at the thirty-four. Looks like we got Rockham Jarrett in there with Mike and Trey Palmer. Mike uh, Baker was looking that way, did not see his first read, so he dumps it off to Rashad White and gets about a four-yard gain. Good, a uh, good progression read by Baker Mayfield. Yeah. I'll be excited to read your uh, snap count analysis after this game because I feel like Rakim Jarrett is going to have the most snaps like in any game so far. He's been on the yeah, field quite a bit. That that'll that'll be interesting for sure. Kate Odd split all the way outside, and it looks like it's going to be a false start penalty. Make it second and nine. Wow, the Ravens are absolutely walloping. The Detroit Lions, who I picked plus three. Yeah. Peter picks and props. These were my picks, by the way. I have uh, going heavy with the unders this week. I got uh, Chargers Chiefs under. Eh, I'll show it in a little bit. People want to watch the Bucks game. They run it with Rashad White, who has a lane, hits the gas pedal, and gets about five or six yards. Uh, there's another flag, though. Ooh. Al Bundy says, I like the idea of passing to Rashad White on first downs instead of running up the middle with him. Again on the offense. On Hainsey, it looks like. On Hainsey. I feel like, yeah, I don't agree with that call. Of all the holding calls, is that one to get called? Yeah, like like it seems like the defender was just diving at the running back, and because he fell, they called it. It It's like, no, he was trying to make the tackle. Makes it second and 19. Trey Palmer gets involved, but uh, it's not going to do too much. 
less than a minute to go in the first quarter. Yep. Third and 15. I say throw the deep ball to Mike Evans. <laughs> hey, it worked the first time. It did. When I tried again. Third and 15. Oh, boy. Robert Hainsey again. False that start. That flag Every, is a flying. Everybody but the center. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, As Tom says... Everybody but the center. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> Stan Glassman says, Bucks just self-destruct on offense. Inochian7 says, what's the score, guys? It's 7-7. We also put it at the uh, at the bottom ticker here um, so you can see what the score is. But it is 7-7 in the game right now. All right, third and 20. Bigger throws it to Mike Evans. Doesn't get much, but uh, send out Jake Camarda. <laughs> I can see Todd Bowles already after the game being like, we didn't play disciplined football, guys. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of flags flying. Made too many mental errors, too many mental mistakes. We weren't heady football players. <laughs> no. But hey, starting off the second quarter, all pro Jake Camarda on yeah. the field, you know. me to update the little score ticker to second quarter. Adam P. Park says, time for the MVP to pin the Falcons back. Yeah, he has been a weapon this season. Stan Glassman says, if Trey Palmer wants to play, he needs to eliminate that. Eliminate what? What do he do? <laughs> Long Lost Glacier says Bucks versus Falcons for Zebras apparently today. Oh, he had a false start, Trey Palmer. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Apologies. Stan Glassman also says um, that Hainsey holding call was BS. I agree with you. Uh, yeah. But he did mess up on the on the false start penalty. After a quarter of play, Baker Mayfield on pace for 40 completions for 400 yards and four <laughs> touchdowns. I did take the over on his passing yard, so hopefully. Yeah. That it's almost halfway there. Yeah, getting much, much closer. Let me, uh, do I have my, let me show you guys. Might as well do some uh, self-promoting. My, I said it before, like, I am just giving away free money. Giving away free money with my picks. Look at this record, ladies and gentlemen. 24, 17, and 1 with my NFL picks. Now, I do include the Bucks picks in those. But that's why most of you are here, for the Bucks. Yeah. My Bucks record. I pick the spread, and I pick the over-under in every single Bucks game. I'm 9 and 1. 9 and 1. Even if you listen to me... Half of the time, you'd be swimming in a pool of money right now. And my props, I picked the player props for every Bucks game. Bucks players and who the opponent is as well. 13 and 4. You are just, you guys could probably buy a house right now if you just took my picks every single week. Forget the NFL. If you just took my Bucks picks every single week. You could probably buy yourself a house, a car. You'd, you'd be hitting up Air Gross and being like, "Yeah, hey, you'd be where's heading, that new house at?" Up, great job, Adam. You'd be hitting up Eric Gross to be buying a new house. So check out Pewter Picks and Props next week. Which I think I'll be doing two episodes because the Bucks play on Thursday. So I'll give my Bucks picks, and then on Friday, as Kamara punts it away Ooh. on Friday. Ooh, they're going to have a lot of room. Ah, well done. Well covered by the Bucks. Servasier Dennis getting into well, the Zach mix. Zach Triner was down there. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Al Bundy, for the kind words. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do a two-part Peter Picks and Props this week where I'll get, you know, the Bucks spread and the over-under against the Bills, but because they play on Thursday, 
I'll get the player props props as well. And then I'll do a separate just NFL picks. That'll be a shorter video. Um, but yeah. Adam P. Park wants to know, was that JTS on special teams? No, Servasier Dennis, but the eight and nine looks kind of similar. So I got you. Oh, somebody's entered in the box. <laughs> oh, no. Hard to see. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, it's obviously not Baker Mayfield, but uh, it looks like a six was one of the. Oh, it says Kayvon Merriweather per the playback. Oh, play. from, uh, from Iowa. Flash Gordon says, can the Bucks get an interception? They were turnover less last week, so they are due. Interesting note here around the league. So the Colts are beating the Browns 14-7, to but after being one for five for five yards and interception, Deshaun Watson is in the blue tent. So, Damn. Wow. The... <laughs> The Ravens are up 20 to nothing on the Lions. Oof. And about to be 21. Can you do something for me? <laughs> I uh, was waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, big day for Lamar already. I hope I'm not playing against him. Actually, no, I'm not. I went up against uh, Trevor Lawrence. Hmm. All right, I'm up 35 to 30 in my uh, fantasy matchup. Nice. Yeah, Devontae Adams, nine points. Mike Evans, 14 and a half points, <laughs> obviously, with that touchdown. Uh, what's his name? Oh, James Cook of the Bills having a solid game with seven points early on. Well, where I lucked out is I played against Trevor Lawrence and then – my opponent also had Calvin Ridley, who had one okay. catch for five yards. But yeah. you know what? I was due for something like that because my team is solid, but I have, in our league, the most points scored against me, or the most, like, the opponent's points scored, I have the most in the league. So oh, everyone you? seems to be popping off. Like, no, I don't have the most points. Oh. My, like, points for, points against. I have the most uh, points against. Yeah, the luck has to change. Yeah. All right, first and 10 for Atlanta on this next drive. They go play action. Ritter looking down the field. He's going deep. Is that who I think it is? Wow. Scotty Miller against his old team. <laughs> Scotty, known for being a deep threat, Goes deep down the field and makes the big play. Wow. Looked Revenge like his play game. against the Packers, but uh, yeah. in a different uniform. Carlton Davis is right there with them. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he owed him something for sharing their time <laughs> when they played together because Carlton was right there. Kind of odd, to be honest with you. But good for Scotty Miller. Hey, he just had a baby recently, too, so congrats to him and his wife. Oh, wow. I believe it's their first child. Very interesting here that Tyler Algier is getting the carries. Like, where's Bijan yeah, Robinson? Yeah, like, he hasn't played at all. Not being used at all. Which, again, if you took the under on his rushing yards, you're thrilled about. But, I'm worried uh, about my half a yard total yards. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> That's like with the – I think they did the same thing for Rodgers. It was like over half but they a gave it to yard. Him. Oh, they did? Damn. Yeah. yeah. What if he gets, like, two carries, but they're both for negative yards? <laughs> Third and one. Can the Bucks get a stop? No, they cannot. Not even, nope, even the middle. Not even the slightest of suspense. <laughs> P 
Patriots are up 10-3 on the Buffalo Bills. Actually, that'd be great because that means the Patriots would get a not as not they would get a higher draft pick. Yeah. And it would obviously would help the New York Jets. All right, Ritter in the pocket. He's throwing this one away. Yep. Goes into the crowd. Shout out to the fan that made that catch. Nice job. <laughs> and they just put the Bucks game on red zone too. So saw the play live and then was able to watch the replay of uh, the throw. Janu Smith technically was the recipient. Now it's Patterson in the backfield. Still, yeah, still no B. John Robinson. I'd be pissed if I was a fancy football owner. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> oh, you have him too? Yeah. Yep. Not talk to talk, man. <laughs> my my fantasy team name, I just want to throw it out there. Tua, Infinity, and Bijan. Because of oh, that that's so. creative. Because yeah. when you get two na- two players' names in a uh, in really the same play around team with name. It. Yeah, no, I like that, man. That's that's a good one. Yeah. But good old goose egg right now. Yeah, jeez. Did you start him? I'm assuming you yeah. started him. He's Bijan yeah. Robinson. Throw into the end zone, knocked away by, I'm going to say it, all pro safety, Antoine Winfield Jr. Yep. I mean, again, just a tremendous job knocking the ball away. Drake London, obviously a very tall wide receiver, clearly has the height advantage, but nope, don't matter. Antoine Winfield Jr., all pro safety. I'm saying it now. I'm speaking it into the void. All pro safety. Manifest it. Antoine Winfield Jr. You have to wonder if they're both playing against each other today, the all pro safeties, Jesse Bates and Antoine Winfield. I'm going to tweet out from my personal Twitter account as the field goal is good by Young Way Koo, which, by the way, over one and a half field goals for Young Way Koo. I'm going to tweet out if Antoine Winfield Jr. doesn't make, say, make or get all pro. I'll say make, make. all pro. Yeah. If it doesn't make all pro, we riot. Yeah. On X right now, that's a big thing is B. John Robinson. Where is he at? Yeah, no way. Unless he just comes in later when the uh, Bucks defense is worn down and runs rampant. All right, so it is now 10-7. And you know, if the Falcons lose this game, everyone's like, all the reporters are going to be like, where was B. John Robinson? Yeah. All right, getting some good tra- traction on that tweet already. Um, all right, how are we feeling, Bucks fans? Yeah, Angle says, did Bijan piss off a coach or something? It's quite bizarre, and yeah. something we'll definitely talk about with Scott Reynolds on the uh, Peter Post game show. Stan Glassman, I believe, talking about Antoine Winfield Jr. He is a stud, not too short or too slow. By the way, did you know that his dad played in the NFL too? We don't talk about that enough. Right. <laughs> Freeze Drizzy says, uh, where the F is Bijan? Not the Bucks problem. <laughs> MJRVI, you're a uh, constant <laughs> commenter during the Peter Game Day show, says, praise be Winfield. <laughs> a little play on uh, praise be to Godwin. Wow, Bears are up 13 nothing. Yeah. About to go 14. Forming another touchdown run. Randy Douglas, second half adjustment. By the way, Bears Raiders. I hope the Raiders trade Devontae Adams because to the I Jets. Have, <laughs> that would be lovely, but to anywhere, really, because I have him on my fantasy team. 
I also have Derrick Henry and I have Ta- Tajay Spears. So, oh, wow. Spears, I just have him on my bench, like in case Derrick Henry gets hurt. But in a perfect world, Derrick Henry gets traded to a contender, falls out, and then I have Tajay Spears as a starting running back. That would be, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Devin Tompkins going to take this kickoff out. He tripped on the grass and got tackled. Didn't make it to the 20. Uh, Bucks reporter Scott Smith is saying the Falcons report that inside linebacker Tay Davis, who was evaluated for a concussion, oh, he's been cleared to return to the game. So he's fine. And I believe uh, Kayvon Merriweather, the safety is questionable. Yeah. For those wondering. Bucks back out on offense. Rashad White in the backfield. Yeah, why don't you take this one, Adam? I got you. Rashad White. <laughs> terrible game. Terrible play. To, uh, no, no, no room to be found, but another flag. You uh, you know what? Why don't you take the reins on this drive? Well, you, Ooh, you, you'll you okay. be the play-by-play guy. I'll uh, I'll add in bits and pieces. The refs again discussing here. Again, called on the box. Looks like a false start. Yeah, a lot of uh, pre-snap penalties by the box. And assuming how the camera angle immediately went to Rakim Jarrett, I'm assuming it's on Rakim Jarrett. The second time it's on a wide receiver here too. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like really everyone's at fault. It's not just like an offensive lineman keeps going off sides. It's the wide receivers, Kate Otten. Hainsey as well. So everyone is uh, pitching in to set the box back. Yeah. Second and 10 here. Mayfield looks to throw. Finds Chris Godwin. Mean tackle from AJ Terrell, but, you know, maybe five yards there. I thought Godwin, it's almost like he didn't see AJ Terrell because he was kind of no. like, the catch was kind of strolling. I think if he would have saw AJ Terrell, Initially, he would have like oh, braced for I, it. I, I, I braced for it, or like I think he would have kept running more sideways before turning it up the field because he turned like right into AJ Terrell on it. I think he would have been more prepared to like try to break the tackle. Yeah, third and four. Mayfield dropping back again. He finds Chris Godwin this time for a first down. Praise be, praise be to Godwin. <laughs> oh, we got a super chat in the mix. Ooh. Let's go. Thank you, Trustin Vorbeck, for the good question. Says, I need y'all to ask a question for Canals next week. Can we add some tosses or sweeps for Rashad White? Every run in between the tackles for some reason. You know, it's so funny you say that, Trustin, because I've said before, not specifically with Rashad White, but the Bucks have found success running to the outside. I mean, who have we praised the most in the Bucks' offensive line? Tristan Wirfs for moving to left tackle and Luke Gedeke for surprising everybody. As Baker takes a deep shot down the field. He's Look airing it. it out. Or Kim Jarrett. Ah, oh, yeah. overthrown. Didn't mean to steal your thunder there, but I was already no. talking. <laughs> yeah, go it for it. Um, yeah, good question. I don't know why the Bucs don't go to the outside more because they have found success. With as bad as the run game has been, they found success going to the outside. Yeah. And especially in like a zone running scheme, getting some of those guys moving in the second level. Yeah. As uh, Narav says, these overthrows. Again, Mayfield, Mayfield dropping back. Payne Durham, the target, but drops it there. I would like a replay on that one. I don't think it was the best throw by Baker, but no. I don't know if Payne should have had it or if it was a little too much. If it hits your hands, though, you know. But all right, third and ten. Playcock's going down. Ball snap. Mayfield dropping back. Ooh. Has pressure right away and. Yeah. Again, doesn't have enough time to make an accurate throw. So, but there is a flag, ladies and gentlemen. Haven't seen that before. <laughs> yeah, Baker hasn't been sacked yet, but 
the Falcons are certainly getting to him. And I think they've altered a lot of plays early on. Yeah. This time the penalty is on the Falcon side. Number Good. one. I think that's a Kuda. Oh my God. The Ravens are going to score again. Oh, he's they're all about to go. Chris Godwin. They're about to go up 28 to nothing. It's 27 nothing against the Lions. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, God. Oh, Keyshawn Vaughn. Come on, man. You gotta catch those. Catch the can't, can't have brick hands. What? I'm not gonna try to get too mad. What value does Keyshawn Vaughn bring to this team? Without being a dick, yeah, like, that's a fair. What, that's a fair question. Like, what value does Keyshawn Vaughn bring to this team? That Why Sean isn't Tucker Sean Tucker out there? Like, you know, come on, Sean Tucker needs to play. They're giving way too many snaps to Vaughn at this point. And I don't want to freaking hear. Oh, he had a good week of practice. Mike Evans, you know, he's making up for it. He is on a second and ten pass. That one almost got about 20. Moves the ball past midfield. I like Mike having an attitude. Now, that just made sure that I didn't hit my uh, prop on Mike Evans. But again, that's totally fine. I can live with that. But again, Sean, like, Sean Tucker needs to get some snaps. Or some rushing attempts. They'll say, like, oh, well, we played him for four snaps. Yeah. Mike Evans, a four catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown. Hell yeah. I have a season-long prop bet of uh, Mike Evans over 875 and a half uh, receiving yards. So pretty much for the rest of the season, including this game, he needed to average, I think, 40 yards per game. And That's obviously, a pretty sure he, bet, though. I mean, he's yeah. done it, what, nine times? I mean, he could yeah, do I mean, He's done it every – yeah, he's yeah. done it every – not even 1,000 yards, just 875 and a half is what he needs to get. And obviously – we all want Mike to get a thousand yards, and with seventy yards in the first half, <laughs> he's well yeah. on his way. Second and eight here, ball at the forty, just around field goal range. Ooh, found Devin Tompkins. That was a nice pass. Probably one of the better throws by Baker Mayfield so far. Little out route. Beat Jeff Okuda there. And got both feet in. Yeah, nice uh, bounce back drive for the Bucs. It seems like they can really only get going on offense when the Falcons score and they need to uh, yeah. get it going too. Bit of a high nice snap. The drive. Has it really? Wow. Yeah. Shot White there again, three yards. Still, this has been the longest game ever. It feels like I'm not, compl I'm not complaining, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just seems like it's taken so long. They've passed in two thirds of the plays so far. Oh. Off Baker the with a Houdini act finds a wide Shot open like Rashad wide. White. Wow. Puts his shoulder down, gets some yards. Was Rashad there White there? looks yeah. to be a better receiver than a running back. Yes, you that's know? an excellent, like, that's a fan, that's a great point, Adam. He looks, I don't know what it is, but you're right. He looks way more comfortable, like, after he gets the ball in his hands as a receiver than he does as a, uh, as a running back. Yeah. That's a like, great point. That's when he makes the cuts in the movie. Yeah. Like, where's that when you're in the backfield? Yeah, that might be something I ask him this week. Or you can ask him, too. You're there on Thursdays. Yeah. Um, yeah. Up oh, two seconds. Call Ooh, timeout. Call yeah. timeout. Uh, just beat it. Should have called the timeout. Yeah. Everything Not was scrambled and rushed from the, from the get-go. Yeah, 
That's that's where you need to call a timeout. I understand saving them, but you know, this is a crucial moment in the game. I will say though, Baker Mayfield has like an elite pocket presence. Like his ability to like dodge defenders this year and limit the sacks. Second and goal. Oh, I'm a sad Mike again. Jesse Bates there. He almost baited him in there. Hey. Yeah, I want to see if this ball got tipped. I think it did. I think so. Yeah. That was number 20. Yeah, yeah, because that was actually a good throw by Baker. It was going directly to Mike. Third and goal from the 11-yard line. Mayfield finds White again. <laughs> Hurdles a guy. But Rashad White is wildly it. entertaining as a receiver. Yeah. We got to see this again. Incredible. Good slow-mo replay. Whoop! Look at that vertical. I don't even think he got touched by like the initial defender no. that he was that he was trying to run or jump over. Wow, was a, good yeah. for you, Rashad White. That's going to make for a great photo. I hope Cliff Welch was right there on the spot. Yeah. Another chip shot field goal, 24 yeah. yards. And it is good. 10-10 ball game, 5-14 left in the second quarter. All right, a nice response by the Bucks offense. Obviously, you want to end up with a touchdown, but... um. You know, definitely some positives to gain from said drive. You know what's interesting is so the Falcons scored a touchdown. Bucks answered. Falcons kick a 24 yard field goal. Bucks answer with a 24 yard field goal. So there you go. What's that here? Stack guy Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Angle talking about the uh, the Ravens Lions game says 28 nothing. Woof. <laughs> Eater says a uh, lion's hung over from beating the Bucks. <laughs> Stan Glassman, I'm assuming this is about uh, Rashad White says crowd surfing his way to a first down. I used to crowd surf back in the day. Going to some punk rock shows. Shout out Take Him Back Sunday and the Warp Tour. Uh, Tucker says, I'm new here. Why is Bijan not playing? Well, Tucker, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope uh, yeah. hope you're enjoying it. Um, we can't really speak for the Falcons. It It's kind of puzzling that Bijan Robinson hasn't been used. Now, on Thursday's show, we did bring on uh, Falcons writer Daniel Flick, and he did say that they were kind of scaling back Bijan a little bit to keep him healthy for the long run. I don't know if that means that he's dealing with something a little bit right now, but yeah, super surprising. Bijan Robinson yeah. does not have a rushing attempt in this um, in this half. Wayne, I disagree with this comment. I appreciate the comment. I appreciate you watching. It says shocker, Evans misses the catch. The ball got tipped. If you look at the replay, Mike's hands were like up where the ball was going to be. It got tipped, and it obviously you know went much lower. Um, so I don't think that's fair to, to give Mike criticism for that one, but yeah. appreciate the comment. And, you know, we can all agree to disagree. We don't all have to have the same, uh, you know, viewpoint on the Bucks game or specific Bucks players. As Skip Bayless says, embrace debate <laughs> or I don't know, whoever it came up with. Narav says, Devin White pick six here? They've had some rest on that drive. Good that point. Good point. I, yeah, yeah Narav, that's a great point. Because there's been a lot of times this season, Adam, and you've watched every game, where the Bucks go three and out, or they get a quick first down and, you know, have seven plays and then are punting again. The Bucks defense didn't have too many occasions where uh, where they got a lot of time off. But as the uh, the graphic just said, that was a six minute and 33 second drive for the Bucks yeah. offense. And it felt way longer than that. 
It really did. 15 plays. Is that the man? That is Bijan. Yeah, I'm he's in. First time. Ba- Baby Lou Bivosky says, uh, let's just cut Vaughn and try someone new. God, he's bad. Well, um, it looks like Chase Edmonds might be back next week. Yeah. He had This is the last game where he can be eligible uh, to come off of IR. He had to wait four games. The Bucks obviously had that um, the bye week. So Chase Edmonds you know, may be the answer. I wonder if the Bucks' plan is to really see what they have in Vaughn, give him a few games while Edmonds is out, and once Edmonds returns, have him take those second running back touches. Edmonds has been good. He just, you know, he's not really yeah. healthy that much, unfortunately. Looks like the By ref way, got Ant- in the way. Yeah. By the way, Anthony <laughs> Nelson is in that uh, outside linebacker. Good to see him. He obviously missed last game with a concussion. Come on, ref. Get out of here. He wanted to take the hand off there. <laughs> <laughs> that was like on uh, the Monday night game, Cowboys uh, Chargers. I think it was the third quarter. The ref, like, he wanted to get back in there to allow the other defense to substitute. And, like, yeah. the Cowboys just took the snap and ran directly into the running back or directly into the ref. Ritter's going to run again. Shaq, Shaq Barrett in suit. suit. Jinx, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gets a first down, though. I guess it's something I didn't really consider too much is the return of Cordell Patterson and also Desmond Ritter. You have four guys that can really run the football for Atlanta. I mean, Ritter, he doesn't run it much, but he has the wheels, too. Yes, he does. All right. Come on, Devin White. Make a play. Boost (laughs) Boost my props record. Ritter looking to the left, finds a wide open, and Drake I mean London. wide open Drake London, who... Is he still up? I, I think it, maybe it, he went uh, out of bounds. I'm assuming a whistle blew. We obviously don't watch the TV with volume. Um, Because, yeah, he got free from Jamel Dean. Yeah, Let's look Chris at the replay. Maybe down. Jamel Dean let up because he went out of bounds. Oh, that was close. Oh, right no, Jamel, okay. Jamel Dean just flat out missed him. Yeah. <laughs> And then I'm assuming Christian Izzian led up after the whistle blew a thousand times. Bucks in the backfield. Cordell Patterson changes he lanes. Cuts it back. But, you know, credit to him makes something out of nothing. But um, good job by Shaq Barrett. Anthony Nelson was in the mix. I want to say Devin White or maybe Izzian was in there as well. Looked like a defensive back. Oh, Jamel Dean. I oh, yeah. Don't make a scene. He said, miss the last tackle. Let me make this one. All right. 321 to go in the game. Second and eight. Bucks trying to get a stop so they can get the ball back. Remember, the Falcons do get the ball to start the third quarter as Ritter's throw is incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. And nine out of ten times (laughs) when you get a late flag, it's on the defense. Pass interference. Oh, that's... I can't cuss too much. But that's bullshit. (laughs) That's a bad call. As uh, Twisted TZ says, what a putrid call. And Angle says, LOL, that was a weak PI. I like the comment below it. Zebras everywhere. I feel like I'm on a safari. (laughs) (laughs) That is a... a, uh, I'm going to... That's an elite comment. comment. Yes. Long lost glazer. Long time... Long time watcher of the show. Uh, appreciate the comment. Appreciate the participation. Because, yeah. Terrible call. Fantastic comment. Yeah. Where's uh, the Bucks pass rush at? Nowhere. You know? Outside linebackers, again, invisible. Solid in the run game. I'll give them. They're, yeah. not, they're, not, they're not terrible players. But. But gave up that run to Solid Ritter. stop in the run. Yeah. Shaggy says, who's got the rest of Venmo info? Falcons run it right up the middle with Algier. I'll make it a third and two. And I I don't know. I'm getting the sense this is a four down territory type of drive, in my opinion. Which I'd be more than happy if 
the Falcons settled for a field goal uh, because oh, Young Lake that. who? There's no, a great visual of Vita Vea in the middle and all the defenders like around him. The big guy. <laughs> By the way, we got a $10 super chat from Vise. Thank you very much, Vise, for the super chat who says, I beat the Lions on Madden 24 yesterday in the creamsicle jersey, 84 to 17. <laughs> it was personal. Vise, that is freaking hilarious. Yeah. I absolutely love that. That is so funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Put it I on mean, rookie and just have at it. Someone has to play well in the creamsicle jerseys. It might as well be you. <laughs> 84 to 17. Oh, man. That total yards total, all the touchdowns. <laughs> How funny That's what, 12 says. touchdowns? Personal, yeah, something like that. Yeah, Vice, let us know, like, who was the leading, uh, who was the leader in stats? Like, who had the most receiving yards? Did you get the run game going? Like, did Rashad White actually get some good rushing yards? Very interested to see, uh, to see <laughs> some of the numbers, if you remember it. I mean, yeah. if you don't have it on you at the moment. <laughs> That's when you recover every right. onside kick and then just throw a yeah. Hail Mary every play. <laughs> That's great, though. Shout out, Vice. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, great comment as well. You guys are the best with the comments, the interaction, all the fun stuff. We've had great comments. That's why we love the Peter people. Can't wait to talk to everybody during the um, Peter Post game show as well when we recap this game. Hopefully, a Bucks win. That's why we do roll call on Monday. Love doing that. So. A lot more, a uh, lot more Bucks content coming up. Yeah, I like this comment here from Engel, saying Deshaun Watson not in the game again. Mentioned that earlier. What a disaster that signing is for the Browns. It almost makes you wonder if Baker Mayfield like was re-signed by the Browns instead of Watson. Yeah, who would the Bucks quarterback be right now? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a butterfly effect type of thing. <laughs> but this is where the Bucks front office deserves a ton of credit because let's like compare these guys in terms of production. Yeah. I mean, one guy's a complete scumbag that plays for Cleveland. I'll, I'll just flat out say it. And you look at Derek Carr as well. The saints, the contract yeah. they're given Derek Carr, the contract that they're given to Sean Watson and what Tampa Bay is paying for Baker. And you put their on field production together. Not crazy different, not yeah. crazy different by any means. So yeah, love. I saw a comment on X the other day field. saying garbage, like garbage, <laughs> a play on it. But yeah, Derek Carr, the fact that they have to pay him another two seasons. Yeah. And the Saints are in salary cap hell. Like they're like 87 million over yeah, next yeah. year. Like, it's awful. Yeah. All right. We are back from the two minute warning. What was it third and two? Third yeah. and two. Dave Canales Baker there. Maybe he gets to see the field again. Hopefully. Got all three timeouts, so he can definitely get a drive going. Falcons trying to double up because, again, as they run it with Tyler Argia, who has green grass ahead of him. Uh, <laughs> Plenty of I was going to say, I mean, again, shout out to Eric Gross. I mean, did he find real estate for Tyler Algier? Come to <laughs> That's Tampa, free real like, estate. Wide open. There's a flag. There is a flag. Let's see. Let's see. Falcons are walking back and makes it look like it's on ATL. Arthur Smith doesn't look happy either. Yep, it's on yeah. the Falcons. So Bucks catch a huge break. So Curious if you agree with this or not, Adam. Feel free. It's, you know, free country. Give yeah. your own opinion. There have been a lot of calls by the refs. There, there there's have. no there's no denying that. I do feel it has been very even on both sides. Is that a fair statement? I would say so. I feel like yeah. the, the calls on the Bucks for the most part, have been justified. I mean, like the play by Robert Hainsey where yeah, like everyone start. was moving like, by what do, him. What do, you like... want the, what do you want the refs to do? It's a false start. Like, yeah. it, you, you're doing it before the play is even underway. Yeah. And I feel like the, the Falcons penalties have been bigger than the Bucs. I mean, for the Bucs, all of them came on one drive, but yeah, it's limited the Falcons on some big plays. I would agree with that, too. Uh, looks like the Falcons called a timeout. 
third and seven, big moment of the game. Yeah. Excited the Bucks are playing on Thursday this week. I know the players don't love it, but I think it's good for this Bucks team to get back into the swing of it. Yeah. Looking ahead here, uh, via ESPN analytics, they only give the Bucks a 17.1% chance of winning against the Bills, which is like this the game Bills haven't been there. Or against the Bills. Yeah. Oh. Against the Bills. Yeah. Gotcha. It's like the Bills haven't been that great this year. Yeah, they're down 13 to 3 against the Patriots right now. The Patriots, the Patriots stink. They're the worst team in the league. Pretty close. All right, third and 7. 154 to go in the second quarter. Not a shotgun. Bijan next to Ritter here. Yeah. I'm shocked. Shocking how little they used them. They hit, uh, I can't tell who, but they London? complete the pass across the middle. That'll be a first down for Atlanta. So it looks like the Bucks aren't going to get the ball back. Which, no. again, this is tough because Falcons get the ball in the second half. So, you know, hopefully they hold them to a field goal. And you got to wonder, too, if you're the Bucks, when do you, do you take any timeouts? To at least, yeah. you know, try to get the ball back. I mean, at this point, we're under a minute 20. Might as well use the timeouts, you know? Yeah, I mean, what do you got to lose? I guess if you can't stop the run at all. That's going yeah. to Patterson, Patterson brings it inside the 10. A little hyped up there. Yeah. That's right. They have uh, Van Jefferson, too, is in the game. Why they did. They traded for him from uh, L.A. A little counter Again, run. Those- those blocks look nice. The fullback there, Smith. Yeah. And Kalijah, uh, um, Ansel Winfield Jr. got pummeled on the play. I hope he's all right. I mean, he looked like he got kneed in the head. Yeah. And I was watching some UFC fights yesterday. One of the guys got kneed, and it was bad. Right Ooh. in the face. All right, Devin White with the tackle. Kalijah can't see there, too. Yeah, Kalijah can't see. I haven't see. seen much of him yet, but. I wonder if Patterson didn't rip off that big run if uh, if the Bucks would have called the time, uh, timeout. And again, happy National Tight End State, everybody. Yep. Shout out, Gronk. <laughs> Celebrating there. With a spike. And even 30 seconds. Yeah, so you imagine second and goal, I would assume the Falcons would run it one more time and then probably go play action or go something out of shotgun on third down. But that's just me. Yeah. They have Kalaja on the edge here. Interesting. Oh, they are passing. They sent, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nicely done by the whole Bucks group. They yep. they designed a screen. JTS sniffs it out immediately, makes a tackle. Falcons call another timeout. And but yeah, Yaya got can't there. See next to Yaya, like the athleticism between those two, and then JTS and the, making the tackle. I mean, and the youth. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Might as well get this graphic going because we're looking at a young way coup field goal coming up. My pewter picks and props. Bijan Robinson lower than 54 and a half. If they don't play him, that's gonna hit. Young Way Koo is a field goal away from hitting his. Mike Evans went higher than 57 and a half. Hey, not gonna win them all. Happy for Mike, happy for Bucks fans. Uh Baker on the passing yard, still a ways to go. And we'll see with Devin White as well. Uh, third and goal, 25 seconds to go. Falcons in shotgun. Ritter gets a snap. Good pass rush. The ball is They're loose. And there. it's picked up by the Bucks. Wow. A strip sack by Tampa Bay. 
and Jamel Dean things. recovers the fumble. That is gigantic for the Bucs. That keeps it a tie game at 10-10. Yep. Falcons had points on the board easy, and the Bucs come up big. Let's look at this replay. Kalijah Kansi and Shaq Barrett. Ooh. People were asking about the outside linebackers. Shaq Barrett will get credited with the strip sack. A huge hit by Kalijah Kansi as and well. Jamel Dean. How can you not love it as Bucks fans? That is great. You know, Shaq Barrett, he committed the crime. And Jamel Dean, he was on the scene. He was. Jamel Dean was on the scene. Good line there. Sly, that's why uh, you're our rap aficionado. You got all the lines. <laughs> As um, Bucks will take a knee. That'll do it for the first half. We are tied up at 10. Big momentum play at the end of the half, though, to yeah. keep the Falcons off of the scoreboard. Adam, it's been great talking with you. Uh, we're going to yeah, give you a little break well. in, uh, you know, for the second half as you write. Uh, I don't know if you're doing most impressive or most disappointing, but you'll be on one of those for sure. Um, yeah. I'm going to take a little break as well during halftime, stretch the legs, get some food. I'll be back for the third quarter of this very entertaining 10-10 game. Uh, stay tuned. Enjoy yourselves. And we'll see you guys for the third quarter. Thank you, Adam.
All right, we are back for the second half of Bucks versus Falcons. It is 10-10 in this divisional matchup. Falcons got the ball, got a first down immediately. This next throw on third and eight is incomplete. Bucks are going to get the ball back relatively quickly. So, good news for the Bucks. Halftime adjustments is everything. We've complimented the Bucks a fair amount on how they've done in the second half. Making those adjustments. Shaq Barrett having a good game. Got to Desmond Ritter on that play. Obviously interrupted the throw. As Tom says, good play. Let me uh, update the ticker tape while I am at it. Where are you at? Yep, there we go. All right, how are we feeling, Bucks fans? Bucks going to score on this drive? Oh, there's a penalty as well. Bucks are still getting the ball, so we'll be fine. <clears throat> Long lost Glazer says, phew, Devin one-on-one -on, -one <coughs> on Cordero on the bottom scared me. Tom with a question. Hey, Matt, do you game? Your headphones look like gamer headphones. Um, I have a weird thing. When I play, I'm, I'm so streaky with when I play video games. Like, uh, I'm, I usually just like to play, uh, like Madden, NHL, FIFA. I like the Spider-Man game too. Um, if the new GTA, whenever that GTA comes out, I'll play that. And like, I'll play it like all day, like 15 hours in a day. And then I won't play for another 10 months. And then I'll play all day another time and not play again. So I got these headphones. They were, I want to say a Christmas gift. And I got these because I guess I was playing video games at the time. Maybe it's during COVID when obviously there was like nothing else to do. Because I do have PlayStation Live and I hardly use it. So I'm just lighting money on fire with that. Um, but at the time when I was playing, I did get these partially for not even really for video games, just to have an extra set of headphones. These are gamer headphones, though. So, yes, Tom, you are. On a something, if anyone wants to play against me in Madden or whatever on PlayStation Live, I'm certainly open to uh, to getting back into the mix with that. A little bit of Call of Duty too, but my issue with Call of Duty is, first of all, I suck at the game. So, like, yeah, I'd play with my friends, but I'd just be like, all right, like, I don't want to be the worst player. <laughs> um, so... I don't know. I'm not good at the game. And if I'm not good at the game, I'm not going to be happy about playing it. But yeah, I'm down to do some one on ones or whatever in Madden or any other game. So yeah. Ooh, they just showed the Bucks rushing offense. Nine rushes, 17 yards, and they literally just circled 1.9 per average on a rushing attempt. So, Bucks go play action to start out this drive. Baker looking, throws down the field. It is knocked away by A.J. Terrell. Baker was looking for Mike Evans on the play. Baker's looking for a flag. It did seem like he hit Mike pretty early. Terrell, I mean. Yeah, kind of a bang-bang play. <coughs> Shaggy says, quit playing Madden 06. Can't support what EA is doing with it. To be honest, I don't even have the updated Madden. I have, as they run it with Rashad White, all right, solid five-yard gain. The last Madden I have is when Antonio Brown was on the cover with the Steelers. So I think that's like Madden 19 <laughs> or something like that. I'll have to find it. Oh, yeah, I'm actually, I can see it. 
from my peripheral view. Yeah, Madden 19 is the last Madden I have. I was thinking eventually I will... I will get a new one, but not yet. And yeah, everyone complains about the new Madden. Anyway, third and five for the Bucks. Baker and shotgun gets the snap. Throws it. Caught by Chris Godwin. Looks like he's going to get the first down. Very, very close. We'll see where they put the spot. Tom says it's just a money grab now. It's talking about Madden. Yeah, I kind of agree. Chris Godwin's been uh, quite productive today. Let's uh, let's look up his stats. Godwin is... Uh, let me refresh the page. Bucks go throw it again. Yep. <laughs> Mike was vigorously looking for a penalty. They will call a penalty on Terrell on this one. I think Mike was saying, yeah, he hit him in the face mask. <laughs> Mike immediately put his hands up, too. Good call. Yeah, Chris Godwin, wow, four catches for 26 yards, so not averaging a ton of yards, but I feel like he's had a lot of impact moments of, like, getting a catch for a first down or whatever it is, so we'll see how that continues. But that's a first down for the Bucks. Both teams have six penalties apiece. All right, Rashad White with... His best run of the season. That goes for about 15 yards. And stop me if you heard this before. There is another penalty on the play. Baker Mayfield is wildly upset. He's shaking his head. The flag was thrown like after Rashad was already 10 yards down the field. Let's see what it is. All right. This is kind of crazy. Because that flag was thrown. Rashad was already. Oh, it's on Trey Palmer. That's why. That's a tough one. Let's see. Oh, okay. That's the same BS penalty that they call on Robert Hainsey, where the defender is diving after the person with the football. It doesn't make it a penalty. They're just diving and not making the play and being like, oh, I was held, therefore I couldn't make it. Dude, you weren't making the tackle regardless. Anyway, that makes it first and seven for the Bucs, so a little touch pass to Devin Tompkins. That play had issues from the beginning. Tompkins breaks tackle. He fumbles the football. Oh, boy. That went from bad to worse for the Bucs. We'll see who recovers it. Falcons are pointing their way. Falcons have the football. That is a costly, costly turnover by Devin Tompkins. And the Falcons are already in field goal range. Damn, that was a bad play by Devin Tompkins. We've been looking for someone to, uh, you know, step up outside of Mike and Chris. Tried to make something out of nothing. Did a good job of heading up the field, but then just got it knocked out. Yeah, it's a tough one. As Narav says, oof. Ken Rickard says, sigh. All right, Devin White makes a tackle on first down for Atlanta. Set up a second and 10. Brian Hernandez with a good point. The offense just implodes every time. Yeah, I mean, there have been plays to be made. And... Bucks haven't always come through with it. Ritter in the shotgun completes the pass to Algier. I'll make it a third and short. I think jo Joel L. Regan is exactly on point here, saying one step forward, two steps back. Third down, Algier just gets the just gets the stop. Or gets the uh the first down, I should say. 
Long Lost Glazer says, positive vibes, chat. Need a defensive hold for a field goal here. Yeah. Let's keep the let's keep the vibes high. Yeah, holding them to a field goal would go a very long way in this game. First and 10 for Atlanta. They're at the 16-yard line. They're going to hand it off to Cordero Patterson. Jamel Dean, up at the line of scrimmage, ends up making the tackle. Devin White and Anthony Nelson also involved on the play. A short gain. Remember, at the end of the second quarter, Bucks had a big strip sack on third down that kept points off of the board for the Falcons. They'll try to uh, recreate some of that magic on this drive. 9.20 to go in the game, all tied up at 10. Ritter drops back, looking. He's going to dump it off to Algier, who bobbles it, but somehow makes the catch, and Christian Izzian makes a very nice tackle. I can't believe he actually held on to that. The way he with the way that he bobbled it and got hit simultaneously. Quite impressive. All right, third and eight. Ritter and shotgun. Gets the snap, looking to his right, throws, has a wide open Drake London. Antoine Winfield Jr. made the tackle. Winfield is trying to argue that London fumbled it into the end zone. That's interesting. Because he technically wasn't out of bounds. Winfield makes the hit. He extends. If anything, I think the ball went out at the one. It didn't go into the end zone. But I'll make it first and goal at the one. And there's either a timeout or something's going on. Yeah, Arthur Smith is saying it's at the one. Yeah, the ball never made it to the end zone. Yeah, he extends. Damn, Bucks actually got a bad break there. Because if... I guess you can make the argument that if London extends it, it's just a touchdown before he fumbles it. It does kind of re... That's tough. The Bucks are challenging. I, I, I'm assuming that he fumbled it into the end zone. If anyone is listening to the broadcast, let me know. Yeah, Narav's asking, fumble through the end zone? Stang Glassman says, uh, should be the box ball in the 25. Angle says, man, if it touched the pylon, then it actually would be a fumble into the end zone. Tom says, it's a fumble. We shall see. Second time, Falcons were in the red zone and potentially may not be coming up with points. A lot of waiting around. Later, guys. Um, Yeah, still waiting on this call. In the meantime, on red zone, they got Bears versus Raiders. 14-3, to three, the Bears are leading. Todd Bowles with the same uh, stoic look. <laughs> so I'm just curious. Like, Are they saying that he fumbled it into the end zone? Because the ball just needs to cross the plane for it to be a touchdown. But they're saying that if he didn't have possession, 
that could be a little different. And they are taking their sweet, sweet time with this. Wow, Bears just went up 20 to 3. Okay, so the ball clearly, the nose of the football clearly touches the uh, the end zone. Yeah, this is a <laughs> this is a very very tough one. Stan Glassman says it doesn't have to hit the pylon. MJ RVI says it's a fumble, but not in the end zone. Narav saying the ball touched the white of the line. It clearly touched the white of the line. Tom says. Heart attack game. You might be onto something. It's definitely been stressful. Uh, let's see. No, I can't get volume on this TV. I'm going to try to read lips here. All right, so the call stands. So the Bucks lose a crucial timeout. So they're saying his hand hit out of bounds first before he fumbled it. As uh, Paul A.K. Flor Juma says, that's a fumble. So long story short, Falcons get the ball essentially at the one-yard line. Oh, the ball's loose. That's a fumble. Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. The Bucks have the ball. Oh, my goodness. The Bucks catch a huge break as the snap is botched. And who is it? Yaya Diaby? Yaya Diaby comes up with the football. The Bucks are going to get it. Oh, man. Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. As Angle says, L O L O L O L O L. Adam P. Park says, Karma. And Tom says, Thank you, God. <laughs> Long Lost Glacier says, Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> M, just M, says, Let's go. Jo- Joel L. Regan says, Yeah, yeah. Also, ball don't lie. Alex Lopez says, you cannot script this anymore, obviously. But Paul, don't lie. Now punt, says Eater17. Yaya. A lot of people happy about Yaya. Oh, man, that is great. Huge, gigantic break for the Bucks. And the Ravens just scored again. It's 34-0, about to be 35-0. Scott Reynolds tweeted out, Yeah, yeah. Diaby. Ball don't lie, baby. Butterfingers. (laughs) That's a gigantic break for the Bucks. Carrie Clark says, taking a shot in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Carrie, thank you so much for watching all the way over in Trinidad and Tobago. Enjoy that shot. Let me know. Is it uh, tequila, vodka, rum? What's your uh, shot of choice? Celebrating the big play by the Bucks, and thank you very much for watching. 
Shaggy says, are the Ravens really that good? I thought they sucked the last two weeks. I mean, they blew that game against the Steelers. I think they lost like 14-7 to or whatever it was. And then they barely beat the Titans, who look like a bad team. So it is a week-to-week league, as they say. All right, Bucks are not out of the woods just yet. Like, they have to get something going on this, or at least flip the field position. And they're going to start off with a penalty. Wow. I mean, how many false start penalties have we seen? It's been egregious. Matt Filer is called for the false start penalty. <laughs> As Joel Elrican says, ugh. And Brian Hernandez says, Jesus, these false starts. <laughs> yeah, Logan Los Angeles says ref's going to ref. But what do you want to do? If it's a false start, like you're going off sides. Rashad White runs it up the middle for no gain. Mark Fisher says, Baker said, play pissed off. Congratulations. All of us are pissed off. Good comment, Mark. That's funny. Lawrence Lowe says, the Yucks want to lose. Oh, correction. Rashad White got a yard on that play. Baker and shotgun throws over the middle. Wow. Nice catch by Mike Evans. He'll be a yard short, but that'll at least get the Bucks out of the end zone. Wow. Whew. Nice catch by Mike. Michael Menard says, I need on to get a TD for the fantasy too. Yeah, I, I have him on my fantasy team. Oh my God. That was just a disgusting, terrible run. That's horrible. That's horrible. I, that's pathetic. I don't know what else to say. Third and one, you, you lose the line of scrimmage. Kate Odden misses another block. Pathetic. I was almost thinking they should have just QB sneaked in. I mean, that's horrible. That is dog shit terrible. That's what that is. Sorry for my language. But Jesus, it's awful. Screw it. Run a fake punt. Who cares? Jake Camarda boots it away. The MVP of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Back still have good field position at the 40. Only Bucks fan says this offense is ass. See, this is where I. What I struggle with is. Um, <laughs> as Angle says, don't apologize, Matt. I was saying that literally. <laughs> that was actually me laughing. I wasn't pronouncing your ha ha like the way I laughed. I was legitimately laughing. Where I struggle with is. Yeah, like that was a bad call on third and one. But Dave Canales has left or called plays where like people have been open. You saw Baker miss Chris Godwin. You saw Baker miss another throw. <laughs> Shaggy says, don't hold back, Matt. Tell us how you really feel. I want to keep it a little bit professional. King Duffy says, run up the middle. How predictable. By the way, we will be having a Peter Post game show. When the box game is done, hopefully it's a win. For all we know, it's going to be a tie. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll be having the Peter Post game show at some point. After the game is done. Usually after Baker and Todd Bowles talk. Mark Fisher says, about two quarterback sneaks all season. And how many third and one stopped? Yeah, good point. And they already ran a QB sneak, so it's not like they're worried about, you know, Baker and his hand or whatever. Joel L. Regan says, it's bad execution. I agree with you, Matt. Shout out to Martin Stave, who says, sorry, I'm at work. Well, appreciate you still watching us while we're at work. Is the 
run game bad because of the line play or running back play or play calling? This isn't the answer you want, but it is like it, it is everything. Rashad White's had bad vision. The O line hasn't blocked particularly well. Today, I'm going to say it's the offensive line. I don't think they've done a very good job. One of those things, though, we got to watch the tape. Uh, Paul, aka Florida Dreamhouse, says Baker isn't the problem, guys. He's, Paul is probably answering to this question from Lawrence Lowe. Who says if Baker loses the next two, do we start Kyle? Uh, oh, Shaq Barrett in on the rush. He's got Desmond Ritter. Ritter escapes and he's able to throw it away. Nice pass rush from Shaq, but also got to finish the job. MJRVI says Canals has the lefty playbook for first and third downs. <laughs> Raging Brisket says the line sucks. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the offensive line sucks, but I think. I think that's the reason why they're not playing well right now. Ritter again in the pocket. He's going to step up and run. He's got room. That's an easy first down for Desmond Ritter, who gets almost 20 yards on the play. Jeez. We got 540 to go in this third quarter. Nobody has scored. Another bad snap by the center. Yikes. Nathan Marin says, Baker isn't the problem, but he's not helping. I agree with that. Stan Glassman says, not Baker at all. He's playing well. He's not playing well, but he's playing solid. <laughs> Narav says, Shaq got to finish those. Agreed. Because, again, you know, that's set up. He missed the sack. and makes it an incompletion. And Shaq's played well. Like, they just showed the strip sack on the on – the, uh, on the replay. <laughs> Shaggy says third quarter going quick. Yeah. The uh the first half was long, but this third quarter very very fast. I agree with that. Tyler Algier up the middle, first down, Tampa Bay. Let's see. Patriots Bills is close. Patriots up 16 to 10. Browns up 27-21 on the Colts. Giants leading the Commanders 14 to 7. It's a blowout in uh Lions Ravens. All right, first and 10. Algier heads it up the field. About a five-yard gain. Second and six. Ritter and shotgun pass across the middle. It's caught. Winfield is immediately there for the tackle, as is Levante David. It looks like they're going to mark the Falcons a little bit short, so that will make it third and one. Oh, big time stop for the Bucks! Finally, they get a big play. I shouldn't say finally. They've had multiple turnovers. By the way, Devin White has four tackles, so... Need three more for him to hit his prop bet over. Stan Glassman says, sure. Do they go for it? I personally would. But for Bucks fans, I hope that they kick the field goal. And they will. And I also have Young Wei Koo over one and a half field goal attempts.
Bradley Pinion, the former Buccaneer, is uh, will hold the snap. Kick is up, and it is good. Falcons regain the lead. They are up 13 to 10. We know all things considered, good field position, all that stuff. This is on the offense. Bucks offense has to get it together. There's really no other way of saying it. All right, how are we feeling? I personally feel this is all on the Bucks' offense. There's no sugarcoating it anymore. They got to get it together. They have to pick it up. You can make all the criticisms you want about the Bucks' defense. The fact is, they're allowing less than 20 points per game. They keep the Bucks in every single game. The offense has to do their part. As Stan Glassman says, let's go offense. MJRVI talking about the Falcons last drive says, dumb not to go for it, but I got coup in fantasy, so I'll take it. Hell yeah, MJRVI. By the way, these were my pewter picks this week. Devin White higher than six and a half tackles. He's at four, so he needs three more, so still in play. Bijan Robinson hasn't gotten a rushing attempt, so the lower is going to hit. Young Wei Koo just hit on the higher than one and a half field goals. Uh, Mike Evans, I had him lower, 57 and a half receiving yards. He went over. Very happy for Mike. Hope it means that the Bucs win. Um, but I did not hit that. So currently, at least, at least, I mean, you never know. B. John Robinson might get one snap and runs for 60 yards. So I can't count that as a win just yet. But Young Wei Koo absolutely hit. So I'm one and one. Also got Baker higher than 229 and a half passing yards. Uh, let's see what he's at right now. He's at 184, so very possible, but not in the best spot. But overall, don't hate my picks. Ed Gain says, offensive line's just no good. I also had... Bucks minus two and a half in the over of 38. And anytime Chris Godwin touchdown. Uh, so Bucks can still cover. If they score a touchdown on this drive, they're covering in the over of 38. Um, where are they at now? 23. So a touchdown would be 30. Oh my God. They they gotta change something up with this run with this run game. Yeah, like. Where's the tosses and the sweeps? I forgot who asked that question before, but like literally anything at this point is better. <laughs> Angle, this offense is offensive. Baker goes play action. He's going to throw it back to Rashad White, who's been great as a receiver, who heads up the field all the way up to the 50-yard line. A lot of people have opinions on the run game, and they're all justified. The run game has been terrible. But as a receiver, Rashad White has been great. There's You can't argue that.
44 seconds to go in the first quarter. Let's see another. Oh, they ran it to the outside, and the blocking was just nowhere to be found. Poor Keyshawn Vaughn. Like, we've harped on how Keyshawn Vaughn has been bad. I, I've said it, too. And his yards per attempt have been bad. But, like, what do you want Keyshawn Vaughn to do on this play? Even if he breaks that tackle, which he did, by the way, you had two other Falcons defenders in the area as well. That's a four-yard loss. That's awful. Long Lost Gator says, how about a jet sweep to DT if you want to run? And Eater17 says, not even sneak there. Yeah, I agree. That's not on Keyshawn Vaughn. And Long Lost Glazer, to get back to your comment, I agree. Every time that they've run the jet sweep with Devin Tompkins, it's worked. Now, he did fumble on that last drive, so I don't know if the Bucs are going to punish him for, you know, what he did. But, like, we... At some point, the Bucs just have to understand we're not running the football well and something needs to be changed. In the meantime, while we have a uh, little break, why don't we listen to a commercial from our friends that are the official sponsor of the Pewter Game Day show and pewterreport.com. Let's give a shout out to our friends at Celsius. You've heard me talk about all the great flavors at Celsius, whether it's the sparkling lemon lime that you see on the screen. Arctic Vibes, my personal favorite. Love the grape. Love the watermelon. Love the strawberry lemonade. That's one of my personal favorites. The orange is an OG. Uh, peach Vibe as well. Awesome. No sugar. No post-energy drink. Crash or jitters that you might get with another product out there. Go to the Celsius store locator, pick one up at your local Walmart, Target, convenience store, or your bodega. And, of course, you can get them in bulk as well. Get the variety pack because variety is the spice of life. Have it sent to your residence whenever you want. Just make sure you're drinking Celsius Energy Drinks, the official sponsor of the Pewter Report podcast and the Pewter Game Day show, which is on right now. Second and 14 for the Bucs. We are in the fourth quarter. I got to change the ticker. As Baker throws it deep down the field, looking for Chris Godwin. He makes the catch. Was he in bounds? Not seeing a reaction. There's a flag on the play. By the way, put your fours up. Okay, so the pass is incomplete. Why would they cut away from the ref as he's making the... Well, I guess everyone else has the volume. <coughs> Looks like illegal hands to the face. Was it on the defense? I don't have the uh, volume going. I think it's on the Falcons. Yep, first down, Bucks. Shaggy wants to know how y'all feel about flag football in the Olympics. I wish it was tackle football, I'll tell you that. Um, I think it'd be cool, though, if NFL players want to do it. If you get, like, the best wide receivers in the game and defensive backs, I think that would be so cool. And America would dominate, <laughs> which is even better. Bucks run it again in between the tackles. Four-yard gain. I guess that's success for this team. And there's a flag. And it's holding on the Bucks. Jesus. 
If the Bucks lose this game, they will have no one to blame but themselves. This is on Cody Malk. <laughs> Martin Stave says free gold medal. Yeah, I mean, that'd be awesome. You got like Justin Jefferson, maybe Mike Evans. Uh, he'll be older at that point, which is sad to say because I'm the same age as Mike Evans. Um, yeah. Yeah, you get Justin Jefferson, you get Tyreek Hill, some of those guys. Be awesome. First and 20, Baker throws, caught by Mike Evans, who runs backwards. That w- Mike ran like three yards backwards. I'll make it second and 17, so not much, pro- not much progress by the Bucs. Baker and shotgun on second down. Throws over the middle. Caught by Chris Godwin. Gets tackled immediately, though. Unfortunately. If he would have... I mean, the defender was behind him, but if he's able to get free from that tackle, I think Godwin actually picks up the first down. <clears throat> so that'll make it a third and ten, so... Bucks were finding a little bit of ground. They're four of eight on on uh, third down, so looks like Falcons going to bring the house. They do not. They fake the blitz. It's picked up well. Good blocking by the Bucks, but Baker is sacked as he holds onto the football. I guess no one was open down the field, and that's a sack for Atlanta. Yeah, I mean. No one was open, so can't really fault Blake Baker. You had, I think Mike down the right side broke free at the end, but at that point, wow, did Tristan Wirfs allow a sack? That's uh, that's sad. Jake Camarda, team MVP, punts it to the left. Oh, this is a beauty. Oh, almost goes inside the five. It'll be at the seven. Nicely done by Jake Camarda. Bucks defense going to need to uh, pick up the offense once again. Oh, that's cool. Dave Batista is at the uh, box game today, along with Titus O'Neill. I know they're good friends, so that's cool. Nice. Big fan of Batista. Great wrestler. WWE Hall of Famer. <laughs> Mark Fisher says, forget pissed off. Let's play smart. <laughs> Angle says, uh, Kamarda MVP once again. Yeah. Oh, my God. Terry McLaurin got absolutely drilled, but made the catch. Unbelievable. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of heat on Dave Canales. Uh, even though, again, no, I don't think all of this is on him because guys have been open and Baker hasn't made the play. But, you know, you have 10 points against a defense that you can take advantage of. And DP Bucks 32 says, come on, defense, get us a turnover. The Bucks have already gotten two. Narav says, Canals Riz has us all fooled. Eater17 says, we at a crossroads. (laughs) 
Ooh, Baker is holding his knee. We'll see if he's okay to continue. If not, Kyle Trask would be in the game. Falcons start off with the screen to London. It's immediately picked up and tackled by Jamel Dean. Nice job by don't make a scene. It's just Dean. Long lost Glazier says referee current stat line is 17 flags for 225 yards. Hell of a day. Adam P. Park says, here's a question. Who's the O-line coach and how much does he get the blame? So it's uh, Harold Goodwin and Joe Gilbert. I don't know how much blame that they should get. I mean, because we've complimented as Ritter hits a wide open Tyler Algier who stiff arms Ryan Neal, but Neal is able to make the tackle. Again, I mean, we've praised the Bucks for the pass blocking, the job they've done. The whole team needs to be better. That's really the that's really the answer. Ooh, that's a tough one. And I don't know if Devin White's totally at fault because he was with Algier, but then Ritter started running. So he started going towards Ritter, which left Algier open. But if you stay with Algier, Ritter's just going to run. And if you go after Ritter, he's just going to throw it like they did as Cordell Patterson gets 15, 16 yards. Things are not good for the Bucks. 11 minutes to go. Falcons in field goal range again. I mean, the Falcons have only scored one touchdown in this game. It's not like their offense has been fantastic. But another eight-yard run. Run blocking has been terrible, or run stopping has been terrible for the Bucs in the second half. Baby Lou Bivovsky says, wow, the Falcons have been shredding our defense all game. Another, oh, wow. That had a big play written all over it, but Levante David saves the day. Again, if they hold the if they hold the Falcons to a field goal, obviously, Bucks still have a chance. But with this offense, do you really trust anybody? Third and two. Bucks have got a good pressure up front, but Algier does just enough to get the first down. Christopher Oxentine says, if the Falcons score a touchdown here, it is over. This offense isn't going to score two more times here. Yeah, I think this is the game. Honestly, they have to hold them to a field goal. And I agree with DP Buck 32. Defense, they have been good enough. But not stopping the run. <laughs> like You can't tell me if they hold the Falcons to a field goal. You cannot possibly tell me that the Bucks only allowing 16 points is on the defense. Second and one, eight minutes to go. Time is of the essence for the Bucs. Shaq Barrett makes a big tackle in the backfield. That'll make it third and one. Uh, 
Looks like uh, Falcons are going to do the QB sneak. I don't know if Ritter got that. Depending on where the ref lines it up, I think he was short. If you're the Falcons, though, you go for it again. Ooh, that was a... Wow. Well, the play clock ran out. The Falcons are livid. <laughs> Arthur Smith wanted the uh, the play clock up. So they just call the Falcons for a delay a game. Again, this helps the Bucks case. And Ritter, he's just going to walk into the end zone. Easy touchdown. Falcons are going to go up 20 to 10 with 6.29 to go in the game. I mean, I don't want to say it's over, but I mean, the Bucks are teetering. Oh, I gave the Falcons the extra point. If they miss it, I'll change it. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, Angle says, oh, hold on. Miguel says, it's over. Brian says, LOL. Eater17 says, wow. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Hold up. Are they saying that he fumbled it before he got into the end zone? I'm not going to get my hopes up too much. Philly Phil says Antoine Winfield may have saved the day. Ken Ricard says that's a fumble. Oh, I thought I had Ken Ricard. Ken Ricard says that's a fumble. Wow. That would be gigantic. The over's dead. I'm going to lose that. So apologies, Bucks fans. Angle says that is a fumble. Randy says that's a touchback. Yeah, so Ritter got the ball knocked out at the end by who else but Antoine Winfield Jr. Oh, why are they at commercial? <laughs> I need to know the answer to this. Give us something. <laughs> Eater 17 says Antoine Jr. for center and running back. I like to see him at running back. I think uh I think that'd be fun. Did he really fumble it before he reached the end zone? Holy smokes. Yeah, he was just trotting along. 
Oh my goodness. Are they calling that a touchback? <laughs> Antoine, all pro Antoine Winfield Jr. Oh my God, they gave the Bucks the ball back. Holy smokes, I got to change that score. All pro, all pro. As Baker's first throw is incomplete. Of course. That was unbelievable. Second and 10 for the Bucs. 6.27 to go. It's do or die. It is do or die for the Bucs. Baker throws it over the middle. It's caught by Kate Otten, and that's a first down for Tampa Bay. We are in the nitty-gritty of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Antoine Winfield Jr., if he doesn't, I, I, I tweeted this out before, if Antoine Winfield Jr. does not get all pro, we riot. We riot. Sign Winfield over everyone. Absolutely, Joel. He has to be the first person you sign. High snap. They run it with Rashad White. Who goes? Nowhere. Nowhere. This run game is putrid. It's awful. It's disgusting. And my eyes are bleeding. My eyes are bleeding watching the Bucs run game. We got a super chat, though. Thank you very much, Randy Douglas, for the $13.99 super chat. Canadian super chat. Who says, I love your reactions, Matt. You are so much the reason I watch this coverage. Bucks will likely still lose, unfortunately. Randy, that is so nice of you to say. Thank you so much. As uh, Baker's pass is complete to Kate Otten. That really means a lot. Thank you. That that makes me so happy to see that uh, that you're enjoying it because of, uh, well, I want you to enjoy it because the Bucks are doing well, but if the Bucks aren't, at least I can provide a little bit of uh, entertainment. So thank you so much, Randy. That's I really appreciate those kind words. And thank you for the super chat. <laughs> only Bucks fan says we still only have 36 rushing yards. Yeah, that's sad and pathetic. Third and three. Crucial moment for the Bucs. They need this. They absolutely need this. You don't want to give the ball back. Baker thrown to his right. Looks. He has Chris Godwin. Godwin makes the catch and heads up the field. He's inside the 30. The Bucs are in field goal range. The momentum is turning. It's turning with 428 remaining in the game. The Bucs are in field goal range. Nice route by Godwin. The defender slipped a little bit. Baker hit him right on the nose. <laughs> As Eater17 says, thank God, no flag. Yeah, I agree. Bucks running on first down. Rashad White. Okay. I can even see this from my TV. There was a hole to the left side, wide as can be. And Rashad White just planted his head into the middle. I would love to see a replay of that. There's a huge hole on the left side. Cut to the hole. That's just bad running. Bad running. I can see that from my TV. It's awful. Baker play action. Throwing. It's picked. Oh my God. Baker is picked with 341 to go. Wow. What a turn of events. He was looking for Kate Otten, just overthrew him a little bit. Jesus. Wow.
That oh, that is a backbreaker. That's a backbreaker. <laughs> the freaking pucks. Oh, that is awful. Tom says, trash time. Baker's having a bad game. We do not owe him anything. <laughs> Brian Shaw says, Baker for the win. Intercepted. Miguel Ramirez says, he's always been trash his whole stinking career. Wow. And they just gave Baker the captainship. Eater 17 says, we ain't beating Buffalo. Might get embarrassed on national television like always. Buffalo has not played well. I mean, they're down against New England 22-17. Looks like they might come back and win. But Buffalo has not. I mean, they had the Giants and the Patriots and looked awful against both. Like, am I gonna pick the am I gonna pick the box to beat the Bills? No, absolutely not. Unless Antoine Winfield Jr. gets a pick six, this game is done. But why would the Falcons throw the ball? They've run it very, very successfully against the box. I mean, there were two guys on Kate on. It wasn't even like he was open. Baker's thrown at least one interception in the last four games. <laughs> Falcons, understandably, run it on first down. Bucks get a quick stop. Now, here lies the question of, like, when do you start calling your timeouts? Because you still have the two-minute warning, and you only have two timeouts because you uh, lost the challenge earlier on. I think if you get the stop here, then you call a timeout. They run it again with Algier. Another quick stop by the Bucks. Now I'd call a timeout. The clock stopped, but no one. Uh... Oh, no, they didn't indicate that the Bucks called a timeout. I'm assuming that's what happened. But boy, oh boy. <laughs> By the way, we will have a Peter Post game show when this game is done. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media at pewterreport.com. We are at Peter Report on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and Facebook. Of course, our YouTube channel is Peter Report TV. Please like and subscribe if you're a fan of the podcast, if you're a fan of the Peter Game Day show. Uh, it helps, helps build our audience, and we love the Peter people. I love interacting with each and every one of you. So please follow us. At Peter Report and YouTube TV, Peter Report TV. Okay, third and five. This is the game. Bucks have one timeout left and the two minute warning. Bucks need to get a stop. They pitch it to Cordell Patterson. He has room. He is stopped short. So the Bucks do their job. It's fourth down. Now it's fourth and about two. So I think it's a little too far to say, all right, we're going to go for it, especially when you're at the 20. But good job by the by the Bucks. They they did their job. Eater seventeen says McCollum with the wood. So the Bucks will get the ball back. They called their last time out. So it is now or never.
I mean, the amount of squandered opportunities for the Bucks today. You were in field goal range, and Baker throws a pick. Oh, my Baker over receiving yards, uh, passing yards hit. So there we go. I agree with MJRVI, who says, man, we should be up comfortably. Yeah, they should, but they're not because they've gone their way too many times, their own way. Pinion's punt is up ahead. Another weird camera angle, uh, but it goes out at around the 20. So the Bucks have two minutes and 36 seconds. <laughs> they just show the graphic of takeaways for both teams and the points scored off of it. Both zero. All right, they start the stride Baker with a, I mean, just a terribly inaccurate pass to Chris Godwin. Flash Gordon says, let's go deep to Trey Palmer. Yeah, I'm with that. He hasn't been involved at all. Lawrence Lowe says, I'm calling it sack on third down to end it. Well, in this scenario, the Bucs would go for it on fourth down. But I get what you're saying. Second and 10, Baker over the middle, finds Rashad White for no gain. Nicely done by the Bucs. Two plays amount to nothing. And we'll probably hit the two-minute warning. I mean, Chris Goblin was open. Jesus. Bucks are calling a play here on third down. Baker's going to scramble. He is running. Baker's on the move. He's inside the 50, going to the 40, all the way down to the 45. A huge run for Baker Mayfield, who tries to fire up the crowd after. Huge run by Baker Mayfield, and it was desperately, and I mean desperately, needed. Wow. I mean, now the Bucs are teetering on field goal range. I had just tweeted out, thankfully, the Bucks won't have to run on this last drive. Um, I meant designed runs. <laughs> so I just quote tweeted and said designed runs. Um, but yeah, great for Baker. Adam P. Park, I was actually thinking that too. Adam says, I thought a flag was coming on Gedecki. Or Gedeke. I can't believe I say Gedeke. I get so mad when people say Gedeke. It's Luke Gedeke. My apologies. But yeah, I I, I didn't know it was specifically Gedeke. Um, but yeah, I thought they might call a holding penalty. Thankfully, they did not. <laughs> Lawrence Lowe says, I hate this. This is like emotionally exhausting. Like watching James Winston. MJRVI says, Baker with the wheels. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Yi Jinping says, this is some ugly football. The Buccaneers deserve to lose. They kind of do deserve to lose. I don't want them to lose, but they, like, they kind of deserve to lose the way that they played. Hot Coldman, <laughs> good name, says, uh, that might be the longest run of the season so far. I don't know exactly, but uh, you could be right. It probably is. Adam P. Park says, I still have to go to work for 12 hours today. This game going to kill me. I'm so sorry, Adam. Um, I hope your work shift goes well, though. Um, and always appreciate you watching the show. <laughs> Eater17 says, I got flag PTSD. Yeah, I think a lot of us do. <laughs> DP Bucks 32 says, flag PTSD, LOL. Alden Duffield says, Baker Mayfield leading rusher because his run game blows. <laughs> uh boy. Albert Vodka is feeling very confident. Says, we will win this, guys. We will win, guys. I believe. And they run it. Why are they running it? Oh, my God. Vice says, I can't underestimate Baker's ability to choke, though. Ha ha. David M.S. Smith says, I think Todd Bowles, dot, 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 is a very good dot, 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 defensive coordinator. I agree. Um, I just missed this last play. Matt Filer is down. Looks like Baker completed a pass to uh, Kate Otten for a first down. Apologies, I missed it. I was actually looking at the comments because I love interacting with the uh, the pewter people so much. Filer's down. Got up a little shaky. And the Bucks do have good depth at guard. They have Aaron Stinney. They have Nick Leverett as well. So, you know, you never want your starters to get injured. However, if there is a place that the Bucks could replace it, it is, it is an offensive guard as the Bucs run it again. Now, are they running it because they don't trust Baker? I mean, you just threw a pick. Baker drops back, throwing towards the end zone. Nobody home. Looks like Trey Palmer was the target. There is a flag on the play. And it's a pass interference. That's going to, if, if it's at where that ball was thrown, that's going to put the Bucks inside the five or the 10. Yeah. <laughs> that's a horrible call. That is a disgusting call. But the Bucks will take it. <laughs> Okay, now I'd actually be okay with the Bucks running it. You got a minute five left. The Falcons have all three timeouts. You want to touch down and take the lead. You don't want to tie it up here. Baker throws. The ball's up in the air! Oh, my God. Calais Campbell almost came up with the interception. Holy, holy shiitake mushrooms. Baker's made some terrible decisions today. Like, Chris Goblin was not open. The defender was right there. And now Atlanta gets to save a timeout. Baker in the end zone, incomplete, looking for Chris Godwin. Oh, boy, this is going to be stressful. Because, I mean, who knows? They could turn it over. They could score a touchdown. I wouldn't be shocked if they throw it here. But Baker got drilled. Legally, he got drilled. Whew. 56 seconds to go. Falcons have all three timeouts. Let's keep that in mind. Baker gets the snap. He's looking. He has time, and he is sacked. Falcons call timeout, so Bucks will look to tie the game up. Let's 
see. Anybody open? No, not really. Maybe you can make a case for Chris Godwin. Yeah, so uh, as much as I hated the run game, I think in the red zone is where you have to start running it. <laughs> and let's face it, the Bucs have been terrible in the red zone all season. So is it a shock to anyone that they looked abysmal <laughs> when they have a chance to close the game out? No. Oh, wow. The Patriots have the ball at the goal line with 15 seconds to go. This is a 36-yard attempt for Chase McLaughlin. He should hit it. He should. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. We got a tie game. We are tied at 13. Let's see. Oh, New England just scored with 12 seconds. That gives them the lead. I don't know if that's good for Bucks fans because do you really want a pissed off Buffalo Bills team playing on Thursday night? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But the Bucks just tied the game up at 13 apiece. There are, what are there, 46 seconds to go? Falcons have two timeouts. Desmond Ritter is not good at throwing the football. But you never know. Mike Evans had a very quiet second half. Devin White has five tackles. I need him to make two more. Because that would make me... If Devin White can get two more tackles, that would put me at, what, four and one for my pewter picks and props? Let's see. Yeah, because Bijan is going to hit. Young Wei Koo already hit. Baker hit and Mike Evans did not. So I'm three and one just waiting on Devin White. So looking for four and one. Shaggy says, Bucks switching to the Bucks game here. Bears win. Yeah, good for the Bears. And yeah, cool that they're showing the Bucks game a little more nationally now. At least for the next minute or so. Ritter has time. He's going to step up in the pocket. Wow, that pass was caught. By Kyle Pitts. Clock is not ticking. Did he catch that? Yeah, that's a clean catch. Oh, no, 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 no. That ball hit the ground. Review it. Review it. I agree, Angle. That's not a catch. And Stan Glassman says drop. You got to review that. Okay, they already said second and 10. Almost a great catch. By the way, please make sure to like and subscribe to Pewter Report TV. Also, uh, leave a comment on this page, whether you're <laughs> happy that the Bucks won, pissed off that the Bucks lost, whatever it may be. Common Sensei says, Ritter should have scrambled. He's so bad, LOL. Not the best quarterback play by either team <laughs> that we've... Uh, seen in the NFL. So second and 10, 36 seconds to go. Tie game at 13 apiece. Falcons have two timeouts remaining. Wouldn't it just be so poetic if Antoine Winfield Jr. gets a pick six and they win the game? Like that would be ideal. Shaq Barrett. Oh, I thought Shaq had some. Uh... Oh, no. Kyle Pitts makes the catch. He heads up the field. He's in field goal range. The Bucs are going to lose. And I'm going to go 0-2 on my picks. But whatever. Whatever. 
And that's a bad play by Ryan Neal. Ryan Neal's right there and just misses him. That's a bad play by Ryan Neal. There's no other way to say it. Oh, look at that. B. John Robinson got a rushing attempt. Yeah, Falcons are in field goal range. Young Way Koo. I may never pick another over in the Bucks game this season. Because <laughs> I'm... The one loss I have with my Bucks picks was... Uh, the over... I forgot when it was, but the one game I picked the over, and they didn't hit. The under is hitting every single game except for one. This is going to be a bad, bad loss by the Bucs. And they got so lucky. I mean, half their tur- all their turnovers were in the red zone. There's 25 seconds to go. Falcons are in field goal range. Bucks have no timeouts. They can't stop the clock. Algier gets tackled for a loss of a yard or two. If you're the Falcons, you just wind it down to, you know, two seconds and then kick it. Yeah, that's that's a huge... I mean, Ryan Neal has to make that tackle. Four seconds to go. Falcons call timeout. We shall see. <clears throat> and again, that's why the whole play in the red zone hurts. The Bucs could have scored a touchdown, taken the lead. Instead, they had to settle for a field goal to tie it up. Yeah, Ku's a pretty good field goal kicker, so I don't expect him to miss this. 51 yards, uh, not a chip shot by any means. Bucks have no timeouts. They can't even ice him if they wanted to. Snap is good. Kick is up. And it is good. That's going to do it. Young Way Ku hits it from 51 yards out, and the Bucks lose. The Falcons. Defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they hold Koo up in the air. Falcons defeat the Bucs 16-13. to That's two losses in a row for Tampa Bay. And it does not get any easier playing against the Buffalo Bills, who just lost today against the Falcons, uh, against the Patriots. So, I mean, anything is possible. But this is an ugly, ugly, bad loss for the Buccaneers in a game they should have absolutely had and they had an opportunity to win. And they unfortunately did not. So that's going to do it for myself on the Peter Game Day show. But don't you worry, we'll have the Peter Post Game Show after recapping this game, which was quite honestly ugly and disgusting. And uh, so in the meantime, we'll let you know when we're doing the show. Uh, we'll, we'll announce on our social media. So follow us on all of our social media at Pewterport on X, Facebook, Instagram, and Threads. Our YouTube channel, Pewterport TV. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can help grow our YouTube as well. That'll do for me. Stay tuned to the Pewter Post Game Show coming out eventually. Uh, but until then, I'm Matt Matera from Pewterport.com. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Peace out. Sorry the box lost.